Hello, Kit fans. How's it going? You are not like it was uh, deadline day then. Sorry. <laughs> not like Jim Sports White. News. Sky Sports News. Jim White. I can't really do it. I can't really do it. <laughs> Well, I don't know. He's not even on Sky Sports anymore. Why am I saying it? I don't know. No, talk sport now, isn't it? But anyway. Well, it is that. Oh, we don't listen to talk shy. No chance. Right. So it is Talking Kit. It's the podcast. I'm Aaron. Who are you? I'm James. And we're back. It's been it's been a little minute. It's been a little minute, hasn't it? It's been, yeah. It's not gone as planned in some areas, but we're here. We're still, we're still keen as ever. But we're back now. And there's no stopping us, James. There's no stopping us, mate. We're going all the way. All the way to the top. We're like... Chelsea with Lukaku, all the way to the top, mate. All yeah. the way to the top. What have you been? You've been away. You've been on holiday. You've got a nice little glow. Been away. Got a bit of a tan, haven't I? Um, yeah, been away to Corfu, the island of Corfu. Oh, a little buying kits from over there, there, right? Retro. Um, yeah, a little number there. Since found out, actually, since uh, acquiring this, because this is sort of Kikira, which is Corfu. Uh, yeah. They actually, I think they're like lower tier, and they've ended up, Linking up with Cassiope, which is another part of the island, so it's a bit of a bizarre setup. I can't quite figure it out when I try and Wikipedia it, but um, yeah, tend to root for them and Olympiakos in Greece. They, um, they, it's they, very they, similar in Greece, like in Spain, where you're either Madrid or Barca, unless you, you know, if you're sort of a lower league, sort of locally team. I yeah. guess that happens in England as well, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, in Corfu, you're either Olympiakos, Pauk. Panathinaikos. I'd go Panathinaikos, I think, just because green kit, bit of a... Is it a clover? What it is, is it? a clover, yeah. See, I, again, I mean, I'm a United fan because of my family, but also my dad was an Olympiakos fan because he said they play in red light United, and I've kind of just gone along with that a little bit. So that's when you had that Huddersfield shirt. Yeah, well, Huddersfield shirt got given to me free and it was oh, all right for, sorry for a kick about well, um, I'm, just, I'm just mentioning you didn't always stick to red did you was, well no but yeah i think uh, i think roy carroll had a stint at olympiacos as well bizarre he did no he did that that was a weird one i, I remember you... speaking to a guy in a bar and i was like oh roy carroll and he was like he's not very good um, no he's not no he's not spurs spurs like, fans can't. spurs fans hate him well yeah yeah, for sure. <laughs> so it's I, it's good to be back, you know. I'm so happy that we're finally back doing episode three. For those of you that have seen episode one and episode two, you may notice, you may see, or you may hear, if you're listening to the audio podcast, that there's someone missing. Someone's not not here, mm-hmm. and that's Sean, the resident down player, Mr. What, what can you tell? Mr. What? Mr. Mr. Weird? Mr. Strange? Yeah, the weird guy, oh, the weird stop talking. Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he's not going to Robbie Williams. He's not left the group. Um, no, no. I, I, I hope he's coming back. I hope he's coming back. I'm not coming back for good. Um, <laughs> okay, now uh, there you go. There's a niche reference for any music <laughs> fans. But no, I think uh, Sean will be with us moving forward. Yes. Definitely, still very much part of the uh, the podcast. But he just. He's got other commitments at the moment, so he yeah, can't join. He couldn't make it. And we just couldn't wait any longer, could we? We just could not wait any longer. Like Manchester City waiting for Harry Kane. It's getting to the point where we can't wait any longer. It's got to be done. Or it's not got to be done. But we had to do it. So, yeah, Sean will be back. Um, so, we didn't want to call him a guest, did we? We just wanted to say this. So, we've, we've made a substitution, you could say. You know, the last minute, a bit of Van Gaal, Holland in the World Cup. You could call um, Sean Sillington. And we've brought in a, uh, a Tim Cruel. Yeah, nice. Substitute goalkeeper. Sean, I like that reference. No, yeah. gone, gone out of my way there to make a little reference to him. So we've brought someone in to save the show, save the penalties. And let's uh, just say as well, he was very much part of the setup and the embryo of this podcast. Yeah. He c- gonna, certainly contributed from day one. We're going to get into that without a shadow of a doubt because it's a great story. And from what, I've, from what I hear, he's very excited about how it's gone down. Uh, you almost say... He's kind of saying that talking kit is his and not ours, which I don't agree with. But um, so let's get him in to the show. It's Mr. Talking Kit himself. It's Tom. Tom Silito. How's it going, boy? Japs. I'm good, mate. How are you two? Absolutely buzzing. Glad to have Very you on. Good. No, thank yeah, you yeah. for inviting me. Thanks for having me on, pal. 
Uh, be calling you Tom Cruel all the way through the show today, I think. I, I noticed <laughs> several references then against uh, my team. But, um, well, no, it was far, far and against. I wouldn't say just. Well, just I was, but as soon as the um, the Royal Carroll thing came out, I had to mention that because obviously yeah, I know we got we got a Spurs fan on the show. Um, so for people that may not know why why we're referencing how you're so involved with the show, do you want to tell everyone why you are Mister Talking Kit? Yeah, well, when you listen. I'm the first thing that you hear, aren't I? <laughs> you absolutely yeah. are, yeah. That is very I'm, true. I'm the, first, I'm the first part of it, aren't I? I am the foundations of what you've built. Hey, a lot of people are saying the most important part. That's what the YouTube <laughs> comments are saying. That's... I won't go that far. <laughs> so, yeah, so we'll explain. So, Tom is the one that came up with our intro. Do you want me to play it? Should we have another little play? Go on, so why we'll not? Here we it's go. It's very catchy, why not? This absolute magical piece of work. So yeah, there you go. That is the wonderful work of Mr. T Mr. Tom Cruel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into the story then, because it, it's you could say it's almost a love story. It's a, a romantic love story that transcends the ages. So we were obviously starting the podcast. We needed some music. I was looking around certain websites, the royalty free music, trying to find somewhere that would fit us as a as a threesome, fit the fit the show. Couldn't find anything. We're struggling. Um, barely found any music whatsoever. And then James caught with a bright idea. Obviously, mates from way, way back, which we'll see very soon. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously, you're a musician and by trade. You're, you're a musician by trade now, are you? Yeah, I do. I'll do it here and there. Um, I can <laughs> no, take most of the and stuff. Odd jobs and that. Little area. Sounds like a painter and decorator. Like a handyman, <laughs> yeah. aren't I? Yeah. Just past past qualification years, years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, so obviously we reached out to you. And I think when we were talking about it, we had something in mind, you know, a lot of the old 80s, early 90s TV shows because we wanted something a little bit retro, a little bit funny, a little bit out there. And you came up with that, mate. And I, I'm not even just saying it because you're right in front of me, but you absolutely destroyed it. Like, you... I think, like, very little tweaks. It was done pretty much no. from the first one, weren't it? Pretty yeah, much. I was, I, was, I was saying to Aaron before that, when I first did it, I was thinking, I just listened to it on its own and I thought, does it sound a bit shit? And like, I weren't too sure, but then I was listening to what you sent me, like what you wanted it to sound. And I was like, it's, it's kind of in that ballpark. And then I thought, do you know what? It's, it's, a, it's a bloody tune, that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it bloody is. It, it really is. And like everyone I showed it to of like, has absolutely loved it. Uh, my girlfriend's dad kind of is claiming, claiming it as well because he's the one that asked to add the little whistle at the end. Ah, oh, did it? <laughs> yeah. it's, do you know what? No, it's, a, it's a great touch. It's like, you know, when an artist is just finishing, you just seem to do those last few brushes, brush strokes <laughs> on it. It's, it's like that. Yeah. So, obviously, when I told him, I should, obviously shown it to the, I had edited it together and I sh I'd shown Sean and James, and they were saying, yeah, yeah. So, I'll oh, make sure you show it, Tom. So, I don't want him, obviously, to like hear it and go, yeah, the cheeky bastards have added some on to me work. <laughs> But then, obviously, when you said that you loved it, you should have seen a smile on his face. Like honestly, like Cheshire Cat, he was absolutely yeah. made up that um, that you, yeah. that you approved we, of it. Of we have to uh, we have to talk Aaron down. Touch. We have to talk Aaron down from a John Barnes rap over it. But uh, other than that, <laughs> I'd have loved to have heard that. If you want to do it, if you want to do a demo and send it, me. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> uh, I'm, more, I'm, that? I'm more Stormzy than uh, John Barnes. I think. Is that what it stick is? To the, stick to the grime, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, Fair enough. Be relevant. Um, but no, yeah, we, like honestly, and obviously, like I said, the YouTube comments have, have been great. I've had people asking me where you've got it from for their shows. Um, I've said, no, nah, it's original. Like, don't don't even come, don't even come near us, boys. You can't touch this. It's yeah, ours. If anyone, if you hear it anywhere else, or if anyone is using it, let us know. And I'll get, get the heavies involved, get my lawyers involved with that. Hundred percent. I'll be around there breaking some kneecaps. <laughs> so as we can see uh, in the background, there you are a Tottenham Hotspur fan. I am yeah. a long-suffering Tottenham Hotspur fan. I think that's what most Spurs fans would say. So, because you are you, you're from you're from Manchester, aren't you? So I am. How how did it come that you ended up supporting uh, Tottenham? I don't know. Do you know when I look back, 
I often think it might have been like a cry for help or something or, you know, <laughs> or self-harm. Um, it, it was just one of the, I've, I've got no idea like why I got that into him. But um, when I first started watching football, it was obviously all Man United and like my dad got me kits and stuff like that. And I like, used to see him on TV or listen to him on, on the radio and stuff like that. And then, I don't know, it just kind of happened. But once it's once it's there, it's there's no letting go. It just grips you, doesn't it? And um, yeah. as much as I've tried getting away a few times, you just can't, can you? <laughs> Absolutely not. So do you remember sort of the time period you started to... To support Spurs, what kind of yeah, team it was, was ninety nine two thousand, um, and generally the team were crap. Just there was I'm trying to think who you would have had back there then. Was f- few flair players, so there was like who you can't be named in centre half. Ginola, <laughs> you had um, like Les Ferdinand, Everson, yeah. few players like Chris Armstrong. He was decent. Um, Davin Anderton, Tim Sherwood, Stephen Carr, he, like but. Around that, there was like Paolo Tramazzani and like Andy Sinton still knocking around and stuff <laughs> like that. So it was it was a real kind of like mix. It was entertaining to watch, but like could never defend. And uh, yeah, no, I remember that sort of '99 team. Obviously, the one that played United on the last day of the season for us to win the league, and uh, yeah. Les Ferdinand yeah. scored that lob. Um, and then obviously until the second half, obviously Cole scoring that goal it looked like he was going to wear. Uh, Hand the uh, title to Arsenal. Obviously, I think that wouldn't have been great for for any Spurs fan, would it? Really? No. And the thing is, Spurs were just mid table. They had nothing to play for. It was just a case of turning up. But what I remember was um, Schmeichel nearly took the net out, didn't he? Yeah, he fell back into the net. Then. Yeah, yeah. He made a he right clang when he went in. But um, getting robbed, as always. Yeah, but with, with that Spurs around that era, it was two seasons in a row that you'd lifted um, the title against us. The season after, you'd beat us in your last home game and lifted the Premier League. And uh, I think that was my first Spurs game. And it was just the start of things. I'm just watching everyone around you celebrating winning trophies and you just stood there like a knobhead. <laughs> <laughs> so I can see, obviously, you've got some uh, kits in the background. So what? what's the first kit you remember getting from uh, uh, That one. Spurs? No, that one. That's the first kit. So that, yeah, that, that, that was... Is that around 2001, is that one? 99, 2000, 2000, 99, 2000, 99, 2000. Yeah, yeah. You had them for two seasons then as well, didn't you? Well, that's you got it. Your money, you got your money's worth then, didn't you? Yeah. Of course you did. I, I remember that kit. That's the the kit you you saved from there at that time is the one I remember. Um, is it Stephen Carr scored that absolute screamer? Yes, he did. he did. He yeah. did. Yeah. 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 Absolute that's great. Was it? Was it? It was. Bosnich, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, got nowhere near it. Yeah. Oh, great goal. Great goal. And it's yeah, yeah. sad that I remember that from that time period, isn't it? And that's no, that's no, what stands out for that kit. That was yeah. actually uh, in the opening title sequence when ITV took over match of the day for the Premiership. The Premiership. Um, and and healthy in days. U2's beautiful day beautiful played. Beautiful day, and the, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the car hits a screamer, yeah. That's random that you remember that, to be honest with you, James. That's proper digging out of the bag, isn't it? Well, I'm here, well Sean, in Sean's absence, I will pick up on these weird little things. Well, well, I, I don't know if you remember that match when Car scored, but uh, we won 3-1. And the first goal we scored... Um, I think a cross coming in, Stefan Everson hit it with his hand onto the post and it come back to him and then he scored the rebound. So that was a bit of it. And then Paul Skull scored an f- absolute fucking bullet header into his own net, just off the turf. It was, it was pouring down. It just skidded up, flew up into the net. And uh, Yeah, but, you know, that was my first scene. So I thought, do you know what? Like, this is all right. All right. And then we go and like lose to like, Kaiser's out and... In the UEFA Cup a week later, and the season's over. But um, yeah, <laughs> the ups and downs of sporting Spurs, it I guess, only one week. So, so, just obviously thinking about the Spurs shirts, I I don't know if it's, this is true, but it could very well be. I think Spurs may be the Premier League team that's had the most manufacturers within their because they've had n- n- near enough everyone. Yeah, that you is a really Umbro, good you had Umbro Pony, Adidas, Puma. Under Kappa. Armour, Kappa, and Nike as well. So you've had seven. Yeah. Within, within, I've, let's just have to come to me looking at the obviously the two shirts behind you, thinking, yeah. you know, you just can't settle on a on a manufacturer, can you? I guess. No. Well, I thought when we we got uh, Adidas in the late nineties, I thought like, all the shirts were dead smart, and I thought like this is really cool. And it was at the same season or roughly where West Ham had 
Fieler and Doc Martens. And it was like, cool kit manufacturer and cool sponsors. And then we just went to Kappa and it was just really short notice. <laughs> and it came to a Kappa. Honestly, no fan could wear that shirt in the stadium without making it alive. They had a really impressive set of tits. Yeah. It was, honestly, it was ridiculous. You have, to be in shape. you have to be in shape for a Kappa kit. I've got one there, that uh, Valencia one behind me. Can't, can't wear it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, 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 they, they look all right. And when, when the players like, if they're athletic and stuff like that, and like you can see shirt pulls on them and stuff, and I thought like they're not bad, but yeah, when when you try putting them on, <laughs> look ridiculous. Yeah, I'm surprised getting... it lasted that long, to be honest with them. <laughs> some of them, some of the, the like, I remember Michael Carrick in one, and I'm thinking, wow, that that must be hard to get on and off, especially yeah, when it's you're like, playing. It's like a wetsuit, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, was it like the, was it the Thomas Cook sponsored one? Really yeah. tight fitting, weren't it? Yeah, really. I, I remember, and this is something that will come up as a recurring theme throughout our podcast. Uh, Casey Keller in yeah. one of them, which looked yeah. extremely tight. Uh, Casey Keller is one of my favourite goalkeepers. I don't really know why. Because he was American. Just because he was about, he was at Leicester, he was at Spurs, and he just, obviously he had like the receding hairline. And I don't know, just he, he just stood out from other goalkeepers, I think. Yeah, he, he definitely stood out from other goalkeepers when he played for us. <laughs> Everything flew past him. <laughs> yeah, and the weird thing is with him, he had the most unnatural dive ever. So, you know, if you put the ball like where it's not in the corner, it's like a bit towards the corner, but nowhere near it. Instead of like sticking a leg out or throwing his body, he'd lean back and then put his arm down. But it looked like it was like, a, you know, arresting him like a DDT or something like that. <laughs> and he just flat backwards and uh, painful, mate, honestly. Not convincing. <laughs> Not particularly, you know. But when, when he come in, he had he had a good like five, six months because uh, he replaced Neil Sullivan. And I thought he, he's decent. Like he was all right at less than he had a decent styles, but then everything just went past him. And remember <laughs> Gary Dockett, he was scoring a few on goals past him as well. It was just, <laughs> just a bad time. Oh, I don't. Have you ever really been settled with keepers, Spurs? I don't. Ever, like, there always seems to be an issue with with your goalkeeper. Up until yeah. Larice, maybe. Yeah, yeah Larice. Well, Larice has been there ten years nearly now, hasn't he? And um, mm-hmm. up until it was every couple of years. I thought we'd settle when we got Paul Robinson, and for like two, three years, he was brilliant. But that Croatia match for England, you know, when Gary Neville passed it back <laughs> and it bobbled over his foot, that absolutely killed him. Like he yeah, just never forward. recovered. Never Do you think Paul Robinson was one of the ones who wore that tight fitting top where you thought this is pushing it a little bit? Do you think he was a big lad, weren't he? Paul Could Robinson. always see his nipples. Yeah, <laughs> could always really see his nipples, and it would. Uh... Yeah, I, but I, th- I thought I thought he'd have been our number one for like ten years or so, but it, it just didn't happen. His confidence went, and then we we do this thing as well, Spurs, where if we play against the team and they've got like a player who really stands out, it's like, oh, we could do with him. So then we go and get him. And it was um, we played PSV in the um, in the UEFA Cup. I think it was oh, quarter yeah. final. And honestly, Jorge Gomez had the, the octopus of his life. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, he made one of the best saves I've ever seen off Steve Marbron. It was incredible. And then it went to penalties. I think he saved the penalty in that, and it was like, oh yeah, we need him because Robinson was weren't having a great season. And before you know it, we got him, and it's so again. So Rosie looks like looks. Decent. And he does that thing, you know, where he touches the crossbar and everyone cheers before the match, his little ritual. And then, yeah, they, they said after a month, they called him the octopus because his hands were that slippy. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Was it, just was it Van Hal who called him the octopus or Gus Hiddink? It was somebody, weren't it? Who God knows. Him him that. They need the fucking eyes testing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. He was, he, but then after that, he kind of recovered and he had some really good matches. Remember, we played Chelsea and he saved the penalty from Drogba. And then a minute later, Drogba went through and levered it at him. And he just had to stand and catch it. But he fell backwards and like batted it over himself. Into, and it's just like, oh, come on, mate. I remember, I remember that. I remember that game. Yeah, I think yeah. that's when we're challenging us for the title and we needed, we needed you to beat him or draw with him. Yeah. And it scrambled over the line. I was like, yeah, you shouldn't be asking any favours from Bunny Whaley or Gomez. He, um, didn't he also do that thing where he thought it was a set piece at Old Trafford and he rolled the ball out and then Nanny just tapped it past him and in? Because yeah, it was that... it wasn't a dead ball situation. Yeah, so. it was it was a weird one that weren't it? It was that was like the t- every time we went to Old Trafford during that little era, 
it was always some, and it was like a, a new kind of rule or like something new had happened that you'd not seen before. And uh, yeah, that was a strange one. And obviously, we had it a few years before when uh, Pedro Mendes scored from. Yeah, no, exactly. Right, no. Mate, I, I had the ticket in the Man United end for that, and I was side on. And as, as soon as it went over the line, and bearing in mind how bad we were, and like we won very few matches away, never mind away at a good team. And it went over the line, and I was just in shock, and I just squealed. And everyone looked <laughs> around at me, it was in the Man United end, and I just squealed. And then I thought, what am I going to do here? Our fans were going mad, the players were going mad, celebrating, so obviously we thought we'd scored. And then everyone's just playing on. And <laughs> everyone around us then just starts cheering and laughing. So I didn't look as much of a knob, because everyone else was making noise, but if that had been given, like, yeah, I'd have been levered. But, yeah. yeah, I've only ever seen one rival fan ever ever get up and celebrate. That was, um, I think, it was when Juventus were playing United in Champions League not too long ago, and uh, I think it was did uh, Ronaldo was playing. I think he set up the goal for the baller. I think it was. Right. This guy, this guy just jumped up, started absolutely celebrating. And everyone was going fucking bananas. It was like literally like three rows in front of us, or four, four or five rows. And he's lucky he didn't get chucked out because he was. He, <laughs> Obviously, he's celebrating fucking, you know what I mean? What they're going to do, but yeah, they were going fucking bananas. The Salford heads were right there looking to. Yeah, keep... Well, that's it. Everyone says, like, obviously, there's no atmosphere in that in Man United, but there's, there's always some absolutely nutters around. Where, oh. Wherever you're going to be in there, you're not far from an absolute lunatic, are you? Oh, or, as I call him, my dad, to be fair. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably me who was sat in front of me. I bet it was. I bet it was. So, just before, I've, I've, we're going to go through a couple of kits from, obviously, your life lifespan and see what how you rate them or whatever. Uh, I picked up five for you. But just before we do that, how you think uh, Spurs are getting on this season? Obviously, two from two. Nuno started pretty well. Yeah, it's, what are you thinking? It's, it's been a good start, but it's papering over cracks, isn't it? Because if this window goes and we don't sign the three players we need, we need another centre-half, we need another... Attacker, we need another striker, and we need that like Winks and Sissoko. We need something else in the midfield. Yeah. To be fair, we need another right back as well. I think Gloria and Doherty obviously aren't up for it. But with these results, it's kind of like, hey, we can do this, but we, we've done we've done this before. And we're either gonna sell Kane and we knackered, or we keep Kane, and then come October, we've had a few bad results. It's just gonna gonna look a bit crap, but I don't, I don't know. It's, it's been it's been a positive start, but it's it's Spurs and like these. We've been through everything with them, like like good starts where we've been. We, we went to Old Trafford a few years ago and won three 0 One of the first matches, I was convinced that season. I thought we're going to put in a right challenge, and the weekend after we lost uh, away to Watford, and it was just like back down to earth. So you you got to take it each each match as it comes, but. I don't know. Um, I think I think we'll probably be sixth or seventh, maybe if it's a good season. But I think it's good. and um, start in the uh, European competition. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, I, I saw the lineup and I thought we're in trouble here. And I saw the bench <laughs> and I thought we're in big trouble here. <laughs> um, it's one of those I think we just bank it on to lever him at home. But it was just it was just a waste. I thought really Kane could have. Done we go in and having just 20 minutes that could have been his pre season, but yeah. I don't know, it is what it is. We'll see how we get on. I to be honest, this conference league it's bothered me that much because it's just like faff in it, just make a competition for the sake it's, of it's it. It's almost an afterthought, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. it's it's like, what is this going on all season then? I have no I, idea. I've I don't, I don't even. I've got. Do you, I've do you got, qualify for Europa? I'm not even too yeah, sure. Yeah, I think even set up. It's some eventually one of the the winners or whatever it is going to the Europa League. I'm pretty sure. It's like playoffs into the shit competition for some. Yeah, reason. yeah. It's, I don't know. It's weird. It's Battles weird. Speak, speak, yeah. Speaking of Kane, do you think he's going to stay? Now. Do you know? I don't know now. All summer, I thought he's definitely off. If he did that thing with Sky, which. I thought that I've always loved how he's approached everything. I know people say he's boring and stuff, but he's always just been really like driven on the pitch, focused on the pitch. Yeah. But that was a sign to me that he's really not happy. And I don't I don't blame him. I don't think he should have done that, but 
at the same time, I don't blame him because he's a really ambitious player. And considering where we were like three, four years ago, we've not matched his ambition. And if he wants to be winning those trophies, that's all he's ever said. He wants to stay at Spurs as long as we're competing. And like he's always said, I'm happy here now because we're competing. And yeah, he, I don't know if it's he's outgrown us or we've just regressed that much in the, since the Champions League final. But if, if he goes, I'd say fair play to him. I just don't particularly like how... How he's gone about it. Yeah, how he's gone about yeah. it. This long holiday and then... Even after we beat City, he didn't... I don't know it's somewhat petty, but he didn't tweet. He always tweets after, like, victories and stuff, or even if we don't win. And, like, I don't know. It's just... It's not cricket. <laughs> not, a, yeah. Yeah. not a fan of that. No, no. All right, then we'll move on from uh, talking talking Spurs in, in the way they play football. So, Thank you. yeah, like I said, I've got five kits um, from in your lifespan. So, we'll go back to the first one. This is the 1990, 1991 shirt. You won the, won the FA Cup in this one, I'm, guess, I'm guessing. Would have been? Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, Umbro. Tonight, proper Umbro. It reminds me of a proper 90s Umbro shirt. Um, what we th- what are you thinking on that one? Classic? Uh, what what would you rate it, Tom? It's just out of five, is it? Yeah, well, just, just give us... Yeah, whatever, yeah. It's up to you. You can just you say know you what? Like or not or... Yeah, I, I, I think it's dead smart. I'd give it a four and a half. I like, I, I love a, I love a decent collar on a shirt, mate. Um, yeah, I, I, they need to come back, collars. The, the, the death of the collar's been really sad. Like, I know. All, all the way through the night, is they had collars. Every every kit. Obviously, uh, Cantona made them quite famous, turning them up. Um, but no, yeah, the death of the collar's quite sad. Yeah, it, but I th- it makes me really appreciate when I see him, though, now. Do you know, like, every, every now and then we'll throw out one with a call and I think, you know, you've, you've not forgotten about it. Like, good on you. But, uh, no, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a decent shirt. I, I like um, I like home shirts not to be too, like, too busy, like, too loud. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's got to have that kind of, like, classy feel to it. And because uh, you're wearing it so much, you know. Yeah, I like it. Umbro and Holston, good combination. Yeah, I was going to say Holston... And is it Holston Pills, was it, as well? Is yeah, that, yeah. Like the, yeah. The two you'd associate with, sort of, yeah. at least my childhood and Spurs. Um, it's a nice little kit. Is it? Is it blue, the collar, rather than black? Yes. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's dark blue. Dark blue. I like that it's got Spurs written on both of both the uh, sleeves. Yeah. yeah. And then just, just at the bottom of the, the sort of collar, the collar part, or the, it says THFC as well. Really wanting you to know it was Tottenham. Yeah, like, yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know by the badge, but yeah, um, yeah. So it's one Gaza war, obviously in the uh, in the FA Cup uh, when he broke his leg. No, changed, I, I, like, I like that. Changed the badge as well in recent years. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. It looks like the cockerel's jumping up a bit on that one, doesn't it? It's like it's like it's on. Um, it looks to me like it's on a bit of a sort of mantle or something like that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You just you've let your cock go solo now, aren't you? In your shirt, that's pretty much. Yeah, well, we, it's 2006 we changed it. We just let the cock free. Uh, yeah, that's, that's all you can ask for. No, I know. It's, um, yeah, I, I don't mind the new badge, though. It's Because um, it, it, it doesn't look too modern. You know, like, when you see, like, Arsenal's or, like, West Ham, so, you know, when they're just modernising it, like, Fulham's was the worst. Oh, Fulham did a really yeah. big transition, didn't they? Yeah. And, um, no, Le- Le- do you not remember Leeds? Leeds was the worst. Oh, yeah, the uh, yeah. thingy one. Yeah, oh, yeah, that was it, wasn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, the EDL one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, so, sorry, did you rate that? Did you rate that? 4.5, did you say? Yeah, 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 I love it. Yeah. Decent, yeah. All right, next one. I remember this one. Pony. Yeah. Now, do you think it was Pony, Tom? Do you know, <laughs> I, th- I think the shirt's nice, but the standard of football was that bad, this, like, this image is going to give me nightmares tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, sorry, it's, it's not on. bad. It's, it's not bad. It's decent. It's like, it's, it's again, it's got like that kind of like classic look to it. It's not too much going on. I'm not a fan of the badge. Not a fan no. of the badge. Yeah, the badge. So, again. I, ima- I imagine the sleeves would be quite tight fitting, which I, I, I quite like on a kit, especially if I'm going to wear it. Like they, they sort of, Grip you a little bit on the arms. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I think it's it's quite a baggy arm, but it, it gets yeah. uh, more narrow as it gets to the the end of it. And uh, yeah, that, the sort of elasticated um, cuffs at the end. But yeah, yeah. yeah. 
obviously it's in the nineties. This obviously, so it's like all the shirts were massively oversized, weren't they? And yeah. Players just obviously just wore them far too baggy, but yeah, this this like pony. Where did that come from? Sponsoring shirts. <laughs> It, it's it's such though, a it's random, just... such a random one. Because they did, is it West Ham as well? They did it at the same time. Yeah, they I did. Remember. Yeah, yeah. But it's such a random, <laughs> a random uh, manufacturer for kits. So I'm guessing, obviously, by your description of, and, and obviously you're saying you're going to have nightmares from it. It's not going to score too high this one. Do you know what we, we won the Worthington Cup in it in '99, and that's true. That was the shirt we signed Ginola and Ferdinand in. So. I'll give it a three because of that, but the sponsors just reminded me that I need to get my printer fixed. <laughs> <laughs> In months, honestly. But uh, so so many contrasting feelings looking at this. But yeah, I, what did I say? Three. You said a three, yeah. Yeah, a three for yeah. It. Can have a three, and we'll move on. Sweet, yeah, on the next one, yeah. So you've oh, got this one in the background. Yeah. I'm so I'm so happy you had it in the background when I picked this one. Is is this a third kit? Because it's not a very different. Second kit, is it from your home? It was um it was our birthday suit. So right. for our 125th year anniversary, we played Villa. I think that was the, the match closest to the anniversary, and we just wore this as our home shirt for one match. This was our oh, first okay. home shirt. Um, I think like in 1882, was it? And um, so it was that kind of style. Um it was I absolutely adore this shirt. I think it's it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's just it is, it is classic. Is, yeah. is this Gareth Bale era? This was Bale's first season with us, yeah. Um, yeah, 2007. Yeah, he won number three. He was, a, he was a left back. Yeah, I don't think he was 16, was he, when we first got him? Yeah, started. number 16 he wore when he first signed. Oh, him. right, okay. Yeah. Um, this, oh, so, yeah, so it was like a real big occasion, um, 125th anniversary, but the, the build up to it was horrendous. <laughs> so, like, apparently, like, throughout the summer, after Berbatov's first season, he wanted to leave. So he started this season in a sulk. I think um, he was a few times. I think he actually scored in that match and he just didn't celebrate, stopped celebrating, weren't asked, wanted to leave. Martin Yall was about to get sacked. I think he got sacked a week later. And um, come out with this new shirt. We've got all the flags waving, all this. After an hour, we four one down at home to Aston Villa. And the, <laughs> and the, the stadium is silent and Aston Villa fans are just think, singing happy birthday to us. <laughs> <laughs> and um, honestly, it was horrendous. But we ended, we come back, we drew four all. It was like a crazy last 15 minutes. And uh, I think Eunice Cabal scored the equaliser in it. And um, it, yeah, it was a, it was a dead nice shirt um, just, just to commemorate it. And um, yeah, massive fan of that. So obviously anyone who's listening just on the audio podcast, it is a white and light blue half and half uh, kit. And if you're not into football, but you've, you've stumbled on this just to see Tom... A lot of Gavin and Stacey fans will know what this shirt is. I don't know if you've seen Gavin and Stacey, but Gavin wears this quite a lot in one of the seasons. He's like proper oh, in it. it. He practically lives in it. Not that I'm a big Gavin and Stacey fan, but I'm just not. I can just remember. But the ones I've seen, I always remember him wearing this shirt. Um, and obviously, it's, you know, is it the this is the first shirt with your basic cock on it as well that you said you liked? Second, second season with it. I think we had one second the season, season before, and then yeah, just uh, the strip back yeah. cock just. Out there for everyone to see, yeah. Yeah, strip back cock on one ball, it looks like as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, obviously, Mansion, they were um, they sponsored for a little while, weren't they, before? And then did they go to, was it Bournemouth and that? And then now they're, they're no longer, I don't think they exist anymore, did he, Mansion? But I remember, I, think, I remember at the time. They're still knocking around, aren't they? they I think are they? they? Yeah, they're based in Gibraltar, aren't they? Um, oh, ah, okay. right. one of them out <laughs> So yeah, so much knowledge. Because I remember at the time, I think United were getting linked to Mansion as well at the same time. I think just before maybe you got them, it was looking like we were getting them. I think we was in between is a um IAG and Aon, I think it was, or something like that. And we were getting linked to Mansion. But as soon as that shirt, the red sticks out a little bit. Wait, yeah. Did it did it look, go down too well that he had red and white on his shirt as well? Or went down terribly and we had it for him. Um... <laughs> It, we had it even before that when Thompson, because that was in red, and there was there was a real big thing. We've got it. We've got it now. Oh, yeah, we've got it now, haven't we? Yeah, the uh, AIA, AIA is it? Yeah, that yeah. Is? Um, we're just always seem to have a red sponsor. I think it must be because it stands out or something. But um, yeah, a lot of fans really 
get the ump about it, but it's, it's fucking colour okay. it. Yeah, it's done matter, does it? So what we rate in this, I guess, is going to be quite high, isn't it? Yes, five. No five, yeah? Oh, Big boy stuff out, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. This next one's probably one of my favourite um, favourite Spurs kits. Oh, okay. Under Armour, black and grey, half and half again, kind of. This kit reminds me of Gareth Bale. Yeah. Whenever I look at it, it's a Gareth <clears> Bale kit. Is it, when he scored that great volley against, is it Stoke? Was he wearing this? Oh, no, I think he scored... Um, oh, do you know what? This was the season where we, we did a Spurs... We're doing what we're going to do now, basically. We didn't sign anyone and because we, we had a good start to the season and Defoe was scoring um, and we had a few injuries and Bale just played a free role and he was scoring screamer after screamer. I remember... I think it was West Brom... He scored an absolute beauty, and he, sc- he scored some crackers in that shirt. Yeah, that's that's your, it's him and uh, Lewis Holtby that reminds me of because we signed Lewis him in the January to try. Lewis and, Holtby, yeah, the English that. German. Yeah, yeah, give us a bit of a boost, and um, yeah, I, I, I remember that shirt. Do you remember we went to Wolverhampton that weekend, Crook, and and the oh, yeah. morning after I went to to the Hawthorns to see it, and. Um, that was a real struggle getting out there that day. Um, <laughs> that a skinful. And a rough one. You, you, you hit me with a steel chair a few times. Oh, that that <laughs> yeah. Good times. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a good shirt, but I, I always think it was just like another nearly season. We started well the season. And it, I, we went to Old Trafford and won. Um, Three two. I remember Bale sent Skulls and Ferdinand to the retirement home that day. Just <laughs> absolutely skinned them both, and like yeah. it was, there was, was a lot to look forward to, but it just just didn't happen. But always oh, the nearly team in it, Spurs nearly yeah. team. That's it. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, so this uh, so it was your away shirt, wasn't it? Two thousand and twelve times was it? Black and grey. It's a nice, it's well put together. Obviously, this was the sponsor. Orasma. The home shirt was it was the same logo but a different name underneath. It was, yeah, I think it was Investec, was it? Yeah, it was some, Investec, something like that. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Um so yeah, what what are you gonna give this one? I'll give it a three and a half. Three and a half. Purely because it's just a shirt that just shows shattered dreams, doesn't it? Right. <laughs> Oh, this I'm sorry. Club, we- sorry. This club wears me down, you know. <laughs> I feel like I've really brought the, the vibe. Sorry, mate. I, didn't, I really didn't mean to do this to you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, last one now, so we'll get it over one. With, and I've, I've done this one mainly for this one one particular reason. Uh, so yeah, yeah. There we go. This, this is your the first shirt with Nike, I believe. Your first home shirt, 2017. The only reason I did this was for the the video to launch it, the grind video they did. Do you remember they did some oh, yeah. weird they were video of it. like parks and fields and stuff, <laughs> weren't there? Yeah, it was so random. Obviously, you know, they're trying to get the market. Obviously, what's yeah, in it? Yeah. And, but Eric Dyer just having a dance to some grind looked yeah. proper yeah. weird. Proper weird. There's just no need for it. So it's quite it's quite plain. I like the sort of the sort of cr- uh, crest round the cock. That's always nice. Um, big night tick, and obviously the AIA. What's your thoughts on this one? Hey, sorry, went for a second then. Can you sorry, me? mate. Yeah, so I'll just say yeah, the big AIA. What's your what's your thoughts on this one? Yeah, this this was another. Um, I had high hopes. Everything with this is season at Wembley. Um, the away shirt for this is really nice. It's kind of the same, but just inverted, so it's dark blue with white. Um, yeah. And just as a side note, the shield around the badge was put on there. Um, as a symbol of protection, like the shield around it, because obviously we would move from White Hart Lane. Oh, um, right. oh, okay. But yeah, no, it's, it's. I really, I didn't like it at the start, but I, yeah, I grew to love that shirt. Um, reminds me of Lorente for some reason. <laughs> um, I don't know why, but yeah, it was. Um, some, kids, some kids do that to you, though, don't they? Like, yeah, a yeah. Panel stick in your head, and um, I can't think which. There's a certain kit, Spurs kit, and it's the, one of the really tight-fitting ones. And it reminds me of Anthony Gardner, and I couldn't tell you why. 
Because <laughs> he wasn't even like, a, 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 you know, he wasn't a first team regular necessarily. But there's one Spurs kit if I see it, I just, it just reminds me of Anthony Gardner. I can't tell yeah. you why. Sometimes someone just like triggers something with you, doesn't it? The, yeah. Well, yeah, no, it was it was a smart shirt. Um, I think we, you lot beat us in the FA Cup semi final. When you I went to that. that, yeah, I went to that. That was a decent, uh, decent game. Yeah, I can imagine it was. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah but yeah like you say you know make sure you're always using protection around your cock that's what i would say <laughs> that's the takeaway yeah, yeah. that's the takeaway from that one for me so what are you scoring this one then tom yeah what well we with the protection around the cock we got to a semi but no further <laughs> so i'll give it a four four <laughs> not too bad not too bad um so, so, so you've had so you've had some decent kits i think all them five, yeah, totally by accident. But all five of those were different manufacturers as well. Oh yeah, Umbro, Pony, yeah, Puma, Under Armour, and Nike. So, and you, the, the only other two were what, what, what else did you have? Did I say you had? You've had Adidas, Kappa. Adidas, and Kappa. Yeah. So you've been through the ringer as yeah. a Spurs fan. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. So moving on. Obviously, you and James. Been friends since how old have you been friends since secondary school tom would you say yeah yeah probably say 13 14 yeah <laughs> I, was expect- I was expecting tom to go we ain't fucking friends mate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who the hell is that guy <laughs> 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 so what i want to know obviously you've been friends for a long time um obviously both massive football fans so how old was you when this photo was taken so it if you listen to the podcast, I've just thrown up a, kit, a picture of Tom and James, both as snappers. How old were you? Playing some football. Probably older than you think, though. We do look like little boys. I want to say 14. Uh, no, I don't know. 14, I, I think 15. it might be even 15, you know. Bloody hell. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, yeah, so yeah 14, that's... 15, something like that. We, and yeah. you, were playing, you were playing for the under nines, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. Well, according to this t shirt size, yeah. Because um, <laughs> you can see sort of the sleeve on, on Tom there. He's, he's I'm try, I think it was like sort of, um, you know, like it comes in quite tight on the on the wrist. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Elasticated. But they were so big that what's happened to Tom there is the rest of the sleeves just like gone over it like a foreskin. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. And it's just gone right <laughs> over it. Whereas what I did was rolled mine up. So that when it did come down, it sort of hung down yeah, to the you elbow. Rolled it, you rolled it up, and it kind of gives you like those Madonna shoulders, doesn't it? With it, <laughs> just like baggy and flat. Um, so yeah, this is our Brendan Bees days. Um, shout out to Brendan Bees. Um, and yeah, we wore <laughs> striped. Are they still the going? Are they still going, sorry? Brendan Bees. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, going strong. Yeah, I think they, I think they've they've had they had some funding and. Um, I think the facilities and everything, especially like round round the pitch there and stuff, was a lot. I mean, look then. at that pitch. You can see the bobbles in it from here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry, you sorry, James. You you were saying about you wore. Well, we wore stripes, but a B would be hooped, wouldn't it? So I don't know why we didn't even consider that at the time. It's only like a few years later, looking at that kit, I was like, why are we why are we in stripes? Um, given that a bumblebee, if it is Brendan B's. It would be hoops, wouldn't it? But um, I think there was two kits that we had that when I played there, at least. On, on this, I don't even know if this even had a, a make. Did it have a make, Tom? Can you remember? I think it. Oh no! Is, is, is there a sponsor on that? There's no. Is there? No, there's no the, sponsor. I think the one before had a make and a sponsor, and then they just chucked that at us one day, and then. Um, it was a material as well that when it rained, and bearing in mind we were in Manchester, so it rained pretty much every Sunday when we played, that could take an extra two yards off you in terms of pace yeah. because it was it could get it so held heavy. It. it held it, didn't it? Yeah. Um, you, must, you must have been really struggling then, James, if it took two yards of pace off you. Well, exactly. I was essentially just <laughs> immobile, just in midfield, trying to... just. I, I would essentially just tackle and pass it to better players like Tom and... Uh, that that was my game back then, really. Yeah. Still like is a, now. It's like a table football player in that, weren't you? Then, <laughs> yeah, just, just couldn't do the uh, overhead stuff, but um, but yeah, 
No, it was a. I, I enjoyed that. I think that's the lads versus dads game. Looking at that picture, I know. Well, the, well, I noticed two things when I saw that. I thought the first thing was you've got the uh, the F fifties on from around that time, and uh, yeah, th- they were great boots then. Um, the, the second thing I noticed was you see what colour the the other team are wearing. It's like they should have. That should have been doctored. They should have been some away shirt. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's a costume. Yeah, costume cool, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And it are standard, like it makes a difference, mm. doesn't it? I think as as well, just you just looking at that picture again, looking at the socks, they were black socks with the yellow at the back and it said BBJFC yes, down it the did. back of them. It did. <laughs> that was yeah. a nice touch. It sort of made you feel a bit more um I, I don't want to say professional, but it, it felt a bit more sort of better quality given yeah. that uh, it did say that on the on the back. And I'd always used to make sure they were lined up nice just down the calf, you know, because they must have spunked the budget on them socks. <laughs> well, yeah, because the rest, I think I don't think we got shorts. I think shorts we just had to get a black pair of shorts. Yeah, yeah. Those um, then cheap five pound ones from the market with the, like two tone stripes down them. So- yeah, exactly. <laughs> the size of that weird silk, <laughs> weird silky crappy material. I want to know yeah. more about your lads versus dads game. What if you had no dad? Did you ask your uncle. <laughs> well, mine was never there. <laughs> what what but, do you get? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it was just yeah we had enough of it. it was an end of season fixture um, I don't know if it raised money for the club or anything like that I think did we draw in the end because obviously bear in mind 15 but a young 15 there you can see from our physiques and the dads would take it easy a bit and then they'd start to you know hit you with a couple of tackles and you knew <laughs> so you were in a you know, show you's boss yeah show you's boss yeah um, and obviously there's, there were some dads who begrudged their sons and would kick them and stuff. It was good. Yeah, no, I think it was an end of season kind of run out, weren't it? Just like a bit of a laugh, but it, I think it stayed a laugh for about 12 minutes and then it yeah. got a bit nasty. Yeah, it did. <laughs> got a bit got a bit serious. <laughs> there we go. James and uh, Tom there, part of Brendan B's. Great, great days. Did you ever win anything or was it just like literally... I mean, I I think Tom was there for a fair few years before I started there, um, as he takes his mascot down. Um, on, but, so I don't know if Tom. I mean, we certainly didn't. I didn't anyway. No, we, that's we, more of a reflection on me being part of the squad. But no, I think you you just missed the glory years, mate. We got to uh, we got to two cup finals in two years. I think when we were like maybe ten and eleven, and um, got absolutely levered in both. I remember one of them. We we're eleven nil down, and one of the players walked past our goalie, stopped the ball on the line, got on his knees, and headed it in. And we all just looked at the ref as if, "Please, mate, come on!" <laughs> Blow up, mate. Yeah. Come on! What are you playing at? We've all, we've all been on the on the back end of them, haven't we? Anyway, but I doubt. <clears throat> right, brilliant. So, shall we get into a little feature? Should we do a bit of uh, Kit Simons? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Okay, so yeah, it's talking kit, and we've got James, and then obviously we've got Tom Cruel down at the bottom there. Tom uh, Cruel, <laughs> Tom Cruel all day long. Um, so yeah, we're going to get into some Kit Simons. If you don't know what Kit Simons is, it's where it's kind of similar to what Tom's just done to them Spurs kits. We're going to rate some kits for you, and um, what we're going to do, we have a theme every every time we do it because we've just into the new Premier League season. What I thought I would do. Is give you five of my favourite kits from this season, the Premier League. Um, <clears throat> and then you two can both rate them out of five Kit Simons. Pick Kit Simons, basically, because it's his name's Kit and it Name works it. with a title. Yeah. Literally no reason why we've picked him. Um, so, I feel I just realised the first shirt that I've picked is... Um, it's going to cause some controversy for one of you. Um, so, um, please don't get mad. So, the first kit I've picked, number five in my list, is the new kit from <laughs> Crystal Palace um, to commemorate uh, what is one of their first kits they wore um, years and years ago? Obviously, it looks a lot like a kit you've got in your yeah in your collection, Tom. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say you're probably a fan of it. Um, it's Puma as well. So that, yes, that, is Puma. that like a carbon copy it's almost? Puma, yeah. Well, they've done it the opposite side, so they can't really have copywriting. Uh... See, how they've got away with it there. So yeah, it's um, 
it's in um, sort of commemoration or, you know, to say, or harking back to Palace's history. Uh, black and white, um, two-tone, like I say, by Puma. Uh, I yeah. think it's a nice, nice, nice classy kit. Obviously, Tom's going to love it. So it'll be a five out of five for him, I'm guessing. Um, so what are you thinking? Uh, well, for me, it's, it's quite nice. And it does, it is in contrast. If this, Sorry, is this their away kit? So I think I think it's the third kit. The third one, because it's the it, third got a yellow away kit, aren't they? Yeah. Ah, okay. So it's it's obviously in contrast to an, a yellow away kit and their main colours, their predominant sort of home colours as well. I quite like it. It's quite it's quite crisp, clean. Um, yeah. I'd, if you want me to give a rating, I, I mean, I'm happy to give it a three kit, Simons. It's it's not too bad. The sponsor isn't too overpowering because sometimes the sponsor can look a little bit stupid on. Third kit sometimes just because they're not they've not really pre-planned for it to be uh, anything other than the home and the way kit. But yeah, quite like it. Quite like the Puma um, logo on the sort of on the sleeve as well, <laughs> sort of on the shoulder. Um, so yeah, yeah, three kit sounds for me. Yeah, I, I, I think it sounds. Um, I'm interested to know. Can you see the black stripe on the shoulder? See where that's going. See if anything happens with that. Um, or if it goes down the back or just round the yeah yeah of shoulders. But no, it's. Think. It is. It's, it's nice, and it, it looks. It looks smart. It don't look. Don't look daft. You know, you get some away shirts that are just like, just grab you, and it's just like, you know, fat bitch you. But that just looks looks decent. Um, looks a lot like. Uh, so I can't say anything bad about it. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd give it a a four. It would be a five, but. They're so 2000 and later, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> so I've got some information up of the kit for you. Let's give it a bit of a readout. So the sky, the sky blue and white half and half shirt is based on the colours and design worn by the first ever team from the Crystal Palace Club, which was set up by cricketers who wanted to keep fit during the winter months. Uh, the, C, the CPFC 1861 logo on the back of the shirt recognises the club's pivotal role in developing modern football as the oldest league in existence, still playing professional football. So, yeah, so it's to mark, obviously, 160 years of uh, Palace. Um, so, yeah, 1861. So, they're a bit before yours, was yours 1882? Yeah, yeah. So, who's copying who, really, there? <laughs> <laughs> Pathetic little club. I can't even get that right. <laughs> okay, now. Uh, so, uh, free from James, and you give it a... A four, did you, Tom? Is that what you said? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, like I say, I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. Um, definitely something a little bit different. You know, harking back to history is always a good thing. Uh, so yeah, I, I probably I probably would give it maybe a, a three and a half. I'll, I'll see you in the middle there and give it a three and a half on this one. Uh, okay. So the next kit, um, going back to a yellow kit, which they've had throughout the Premier League years. Uh, the next one up. Is this one the Chelsea? Is it the Chelsea away shirt? This one, uh, so it's yellow with black pinstripes, uh, horizontal, a sort of black three logo, black badge, and a black night tip with a black sort of collar. Uh, Kante there showing that it's number one for him. So, what we're thinking, boys, new Chelsea shirt. This plays exactly into what I was saying about the Palace shirt in that the sponsor didn't look too much and for. I would have liked to see them invert the colours on the sponsor there and have the three as blue with the yellow um, sort of <clears throat> veins running through it because it just pops too much for me in the middle of the shirt. I quite like the rest of the design from Nike there. The collar seems okay. Sleeves, I mean, I know it's Kante. I'd like, I'd like to see the sleeves a bit tighter if I was being really picky, but it's just the three for me that ruins it in the, in the, in the middle of that. So I'm going to say two. Kit Simons for me Ooh. for that one. Okay. Uh, Tom? I think, do you know what? I, th I think, bar the sponsor, it's dead nice. Yeah. It's, it's not like, there's, there's enough going on there, but it's not like too much. It's not overbearing. I think it's it's a decent colour. I don't think they've had one like that for a good few years. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know whether it would be the, if the sponsor was a bit smaller to fit within the stripes or if they made those stripes a bit bigger, you know, so it just looked a bit more symmetrical or something or if the sponsor was a bit smaller or a different colour, I don't know. But, um, yeah. yeah, 
If you, if you want a tighter fit, get Lukaku in it now. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's very true. So what out of uh, five, what would you give that one then, Tom? I'd give that a three and a half. Three and a half. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that one. I think the sponsor. So, I mean, three, I've gone sort of from the, the number three to actually the word three. If you look on the shop, actually says free on it now. So I, I won't mind seeing a kit like that. I think if it just said free on the on the sort of chest or, or the midriff, I think it would it would look a lot better, that kit. Um, but no, I, I like it. I think it uh, stands out and look, look, looks quite nice for an away kit. And so I'll probably, I'll give that a three and a half again, like, like Tom give it. Um, it's quite nice. The next one, uh, they play tonight against Leicester. Um, again, going back to history, sort of rehashing old, old classics. It's this one. It's the new home shirt from West Ham United. Um, taking it back to the, like 2001, Paolo Di Canio, when he scored that um, amazing volley. Uh, what are we thinking about this one, boys? Um, West Ham, innit? Um, I quite, I prefer, <laughs> I pre- it just, you know, just like there's not real, there's no real difference to it and some people might prefer that. Um I, I like the fact that the, the blue sort of goes right up to the neck rather than sometimes it used to cut off right at the shoulder, didn't it, for West Ham? Um, sleeve looks okay in it, but it's just a bit meh for me. Umbro, yeah, it's all right. Um, it's got a collar on it. I know you guys are a fan of the collar. Um, yeah, uh, I don't really... In terms of scoring it, I'll give it a two and a half, Kit Simons. It's just... <laughs> It's just never here nor there for me, that one, to be honest. Tom Crew? I, th- I think it's sound. I think it's decent. The, the only thing would be there's not enough blue on it for me. I think it could stick a bit on the side and maybe have the, the whole colour blue. But, yeah, it is. It's like late 90s, early 90s, um, like the Feeler and Doc Martens kits. I think I think it's decent. Yeah, it reminds me of, like, like the Canio... Um, I think Paolo Wanchop played for him for a season. And then, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's not bad at all. It's not bad. I'll give it. Got to mark it down because it's West Ham. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. oh, do you know? I'll give it a four. I'll give it a four. Oh, it a four. four. Fair play, fair play. Fair play. I, I I absolutely agree on this one, Tom. I think it's like smart, it's classy. It like harks back to when West Ham were quite decent, had a decent team. Obviously, like say they did Canny or Volley. Um, the sponsor looks decent on it, um, like Umbro, like say James, the collar. You know, hopefully the return of the collars. Um, Umbro for me, like I've I've said it for a couple of years now. Probably second, no, not second. Probably say the third best manufacturer out there uh, after Adidas and, and Nike for me. I think they make some amazing, amazing kits. Like you see Jamaica, all the Brazilian teams that they do at the minute. A lot of the English clubs are, are going back to to Umbro. I think they're doing some really nice stuff again. Uh, I think even the away kit, uh, West Ham's away kit's quite nice as well. And yeah, no, it's a belt. What, what is the colour of that? Because what, what I was just about to say was, if I if I was a West Ham fan and I'd seen that, I'd probably be more inclined to get an away kit, you know, if you weren't going to get both. Obviously, I've not seen it. But just so, the, for me, it's just a bit... So I think the, the away kit's white. The, it's a white one, the away kit, and they've got a blue third kit, I'm going to say. I'm okay. just going to double check it. The away shirt is like a, it's white and dead light blue sort of vertical stripes, Um you can like it's dead nice. Cut cuts away for the Betway sponsor, but I'll, I've not picked that one, James. So I don't mind. I'm fuck. I'm fuck. I'm talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think if I was a West Ham fan, I'd be like, if I had to, if I can only afford to get one kit, I'd be more inclined to maybe go for an away or a third kit, just because that just. That could be from any particular season, personally for me, anyway, from just playing devil's advocate. So, you're talking about James, it's proper West Ham, mate, isn't it? It's proper you West Ham, you mug, you mug. Milk. You mug. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna give that a four along with Tom. I think that is a really nice shirt. Uh, big, big, big fan of it. Uh, one of the, the class, I think it's get, going by up high on the list. All the big football accounts are doing, you know, when they show you the best kits of the season, I think that's gone high, quite high up. Uh, in the list, okay. Uh, number four, um, I know the score, I probably know the score from Tom already for this one 
But for me, it's probably one of the best kits that's come out uh, for this season. It is the Arsenal <laughs> third shirt. Um, harking back to the 90s again, uh, when they had this sort of the blue with the big lightning bolt across Ian Wright, Dennis Burkamp, um sort of times. Got Thomas Party in this one. I just think it's, if you can take your judgment out of obviously the club, uh, the laughing stock that is Arsenal, it's a beautiful, beautiful shirt. Um, I'll start with you this time, Tom. Uh, what we're saying? Do you know what? It's it's smart, isn't it? It's a, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a it's a great shirt. Um, like take the badge off it. Like it's a, it's a great shirt. And like I think Arsenal shirts over the last like two three years have all been sound. The only issue is now with footy shirts is because they're only lasting a year. You, you you hardly see them. Like they, they might wear like an away shirt like two times. You think you look back and you think, God, what a waste. Like yeah. they've got them um, a yellow, is it a yellow? Is this the third or is this the away? So this is the first shirt, the yellow one is yeah. the away shirt. So yeah. This is gonna get worn very few times, but it's 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 a really nice shirt. And it is like that, like 95, 96 round then, isn't it? Yeah, like, it's around that time, yeah, 95, 96. Then, yeah, it's uh, it's the same colour, so it, like it gives you those memories, like to those players like Wright, Burkamp, Platt, stuff like that. And then yeah. at the same time, it's 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 a modern pattern on it. So yeah, I think it's it's a really nice shirt. Uh, what would what would you score it then? Out of five? Do you know what? <laughs> I, I, I don't have any like bad judgment towards him anymore. Like I, no. I just feel sorry for him. I'll, <laughs> They can, have, they can have a four and a half for it. <laughs> nice, nice. James, what are your thoughts? Yeah, Ian Wright is a player that springs to mind when I see this. Very, very nice. I like that the Adidas, um, is it tr is it Tri? What do they call it? The, the sort of the three lines? The, the, that, no, it's not the, it's not the thing. I don't, I'm not too sure what they call it. No. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's, I like, know. it's the new it's, That's in red rather than in <clears> white, and I quite like that. It sort of stands out. On there, um, do like I do like that. I, out of the ones you've shown me so far, really nice. I, I love a retro feel on a kit. Do like the colours. Um, agree with Tom completely. This should be their second kit. It'd be nice to see it played in much more. I'll give it four and a half. Kit Simons out of five. Lovely. So yeah, um, like you were saying, I, I, like I, the reason I picked it is probably probably my second favourite shirt that's been released this season in the Premier League. Uh, as you mentioned, the Adidas logo, obviously the the three stripes are in red, where Adidas is in uh, white. That's actually all for the, the big Adidas team. So Real Madrid, Bayern, United, Arsenal um, and Juventus. They all have its EQT. It's taken from the EQT um, sort of range. So all that you'll notice on the United third, that's that's similar. Um, and they've done that, obviously. You're thinking of tray foil. It's just come to me, Ed, what you meant. Tray foil. Yeah, that's... But, that, but that's not the tray foil, is it? That's the, oh, newer, okay. the newer design. The tray, foil, the, old one. the tray foil is the older one. The old yeah, yeah, yeah. thingy one. Um, but no, yeah, like, like you know, any, anything retro that you bring into sort of the now, I'm, I'm all for. And, you, you know, Adidas get it right a lot of the time. Like Tom mentioned before, sort of the kits that they're, they're doing for Arsenal, like, they remind me of when United first went back to Adidas back in 2015 and they started doing some of the retro stuff United do. It's absolutely brilliant. And they kind of tailed off and they brought it back around this season. For me, the United's free kits this season are probably the best three we've had under Adidas, maybe minus one or two. Um, but Arsenal, they just seem to get it right every single time. Um, and like I say, this this is this is probably the best one of theirs this season. Uh, it's just a shame you won't see it as much. Obviously, it's not going to be in Europe, <clears throat> so you won't see it that much. Obviously, probably got bad memories for Arsenal fans because he got beat uh, by Brentford wearing it. Um, but no, it, it is a great kit, and I I would give it a four or five, uh, four point five um, out of five. Kit Simons on that one, most definitely. Um, my last one, it had to be done. I think you know what's coming, lads. Uh, is the Manchester United third shirt um, for me I just absolutely love this shirt everything about it um, but I'll save my uh, views to last we'll go with James what we're thinking mate really like it um, obviously Team Viewer, I think originally as a sponsor is that a blue logo and they changed it yeah the purpose uh, of sponsoring 
Yeah, they're long uh, blue, yeah. Right. So um, I like the fact that obviously it's not uh, like a sky blue, if you like, for uh, Man City, etc. Again, obviously the logo. See, I don't like that as much because it's blue with a blue background with the Adidas sign. Oh, okay. um, but I do like it as a kit. I do like it. I'm going to give this four out of five kit signs for me. I, the Arsenal one edges it in terms of just the style of it, I think. And obviously that's a retro throwback, which, I mean, I'm sure you'll come up with some uh, details to say that this is a throwback, but it's not one I recognise. Um but yeah, no, it's it's still a it's re, still a really strong kit. So yeah, four out of five for me. Okay, Tom Crew. Yeah, it's, it's outstanding, isn't it? It's really nice. I think all all the Man United shirts this season are, are bob on. I think they're all different, but they've all got like that classic feel to them. And like the yeah. only thing is with this, obviously the sponsor needs to be on there and that. The only thing I'd do to make it be better would be to have the actual logo of the sponsor above it. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So it's yeah. just got yeah. that and then below it says team viewer. So I'm push it yeah. all down a little bit. But yeah, no, it's 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 dead smart. Like I'm I'm actually really envious of all your you kits this season. <laughs> really nice. Um I agree what you said about the the Adidas needing to be all in yellow. Um maybe a bit more yellow. Um, at the sleeve, but yeah, no, dead nice. Okay, so I've pushed you for a score on this one. Oh, it's five. Yeah. Five. No, oh, nice. So you yeah, come um... back. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just going into a bit more detail about this one. So yeah, like you say, it's the EQT logo. I probably would have gone for the free strikes, maybe being black, um, to con contrast the blue. You're right in what you're saying there, James. Obviously, the Arsenal one stands out a bit more. Um, for me, like you raised a good point there, Tom, in terms of the um, the sponsor uh, from Team Viewer. I would probably just get rid of their logo, and just have mm. Team Viewer. I think that would work a lot better. Uh, keep it quite simple, a lot like um, the sort of Betway one we saw with West Ham. Obviously, it's a little bit smaller, which I like. Um, but yeah, um, it. So this kit, and it's sometimes Adidas come out with some absolute bollocks. Do you remember the one? From a couple of seasons ago, was it 2017, 2018, when United had the black shorts for home and it had the sort of black uh, graded lines okay, going into the shorts, Lukaku's last season and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Jose's last season. So that was meant to signify the train tracks from when United were Newton Heath, which was utter bollocks. Like, there's no <laughs> way, there's no way any, any fans, you just wanted a gradient shirt that went into black shorts. That's all you wanted yeah. to do. They tried to pass it off. So, Going back to this kit, this is meant to be a newer version of the black Kung Fu kit that Cantona wore. Right. How? How exactly? I'd like to hear... Um, <clears throat> so, do you know these, these little parts of the shirt? So, on the sleeves of that black shirt, the little cu cuff bit was that colour blue. Okay? Right. Little bits uh, on the collar was blue. And obviously, it had yellow on it as well. So they've they're trying to rehash it, as in to say that's that's a reworking of um, the kung fu kit <laughs> that Cantona now wore. Not buying it, like I say, Adidas come out with some bollocks, and this is obviously one one of their um, one of their things they're saying. But that, that like it is my favorite kit of this season. Obviously, the the away shirt is obviously a rehash of the sort of ninety two um, Adidas shirt. Um, and then obviously the home shirt is meant to be sort of from the 60s and stuff like that. So it's quite plain, simple, um, but works quite well. So they've, 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 they've sort of gone retro for all three shirts in varying degrees. Um, but for me, this this one definitely stands out. And yeah, I have to follow Tom and this and give it a five. It's probably my favourite shirt that United have had for a long, long time. Um, like I say, don't don't give the money to uh, any money to Glazers other than a season ticket. So obviously I won't be buying it through them. Um, which is a shame because I would I'd probably wear all three shirts this season. Um, but no, um, there, there's my favourite um, five shirts from the Premier League this season. Do you know what we need to do? We need to do the dishonourable mentions. Oh, of course. There's a, okay. There's a couple of shirts you needed to do for dishonourable mentions. Um, so the first one, um, so going back to it, what we can do is, you actually mentioned it before, Tom, um, 
I hate this. The kit is nice. The reason why it's been worn is absolute dog shit, to be honest with you. I hate it. So the first kit, this honourable mention for this season, is Burnt Leno wearing the Arsenal away, away kit in goal yesterday against Chelsea. What the fuck? What the fuck? And you know what? He did it last season as well with the white shirt with the marble effect on. Um, so like you were saying, Tom, it's getting some use because... You know, he's, he's wearing it probably more than the, the players are. So, what are your thoughts on this one, boys? What's going on with his goalie shirts? What? You're not so, enough for them? He, he, will, he will have three, won't he? Like, yeah. you know, for every kit you have, you have three. Um, I know one of them will be green. I imagine, I, I don't even know what the other two colours will be, but there's no excuse, is there? Like, you know, there's a way of working around it. The, key, the, the referees must have different colour kits. Uh, I think didn't Mendy wear grey yesterday, so that you know, I, I can't think that would be an issue. There's no excuse other than maybe he likes it and he thinks he can get away with it. I have no idea. No, I'm not. I'm not a fan of that um, one bit. There's, <laughs> there's no. There's no reason why your goalkeeper kits. You know, this isn't Sunday league. Like we were talking about, me and Tom playing football. And you buy your own shorts. This isn't. This is you know. This is Premier League football. You should be able to wear a goalkeeper kit that doesn't clash with the referees or the opposition. It's as simple as that. Whether it's a, a pink number that we can all discuss, whether it's um, green, it's tradition. Obviously, goalkeepers, purple, you name it. But to wear your third kit, I'm sorry, it's just that is a bit Arsenal, that, isn't it? And it's just not. It's not even the third. Kit. It's even worse. Yeah. What were we saying, Tom? I just, I just don't get the thinking behind it. It's <laughs> baffled me for all like the worst reasons. Like, if you're the the, the dude who designs the three goalie kits, you're going to be feeling really shit about yourself, aren't you? So <laughs> yeah, you pissed off. Like, you pissed off, weren't you? Like, my work not good enough for you. Is it? Is, yeah, you know? That was, was was the green one in the wash this week. Or it's just like <laughs> proper Sunday league stuff. But I don't know if that's his preference or what. But either way, that's just. That well, sums say, Arsenal up, doesn't it? Though that's just proper. Makes sense. What's What's your guys' take on goalkeepers in short sleeves? Anyway, I think I prefer a keeper with a long sleeve for some reason. I prefer long sleeves. I I don't I don't mind short sleeves with base layers on keepers. I don't actually mind that sometimes. But yeah, so long sleeves all the way. I think goalkeepers do have a preference sometimes, don't they? But for me, it's a bit rush goalie that when they've got short sleeves like that. Well, he's wearing an outfield kit, so maybe that's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think long sleeves, those elbow pads on him. Oh, you know I mean? just, just proper. Do you know, what I, mean? I think was was it Bartes? He was the first to have short sleeves. He's the first I remember. Oh no, yeah. uh, Campos did as well, didn't he? he? Used to wear short sleeves, but they were down to here anyway. Yeah. Watch. Yeah. But yeah, I remember Campos wearing short sleeves because he designed his own kits and stuff like that. But yeah, Bartek made it famous. I think I heard an interview with Chris Kirkland say that he cut his sleeves when he was at like teams like Wigan because he preferred to, if he was going to get contact on the ball, he didn't want it to like just flap off at like a, a baggy shirt, but just, just wear a tighter shirt. But um, yeah, goalkeepers got to be long sleeves for me, just on a slightly different topic. <clears throat> yeah, so I, I, I think if you're a goalie and you're wearing short sleeves, you've got ulterior motives, haven't you? Like yeah. you, you're, a, you're a frustrated outfield player. Definitely. Like, Hundred yeah. percent. Like I say, he's got he's got previous because he did it, he did it last season in in their away shirt as well. So uh, not going to rate it. Just going to give it a dishonourable mention as a, a put. It's not even a bad kit. It's just I, I didn't like the fact that he's he's, he's wore it in a game. Um, the next one, I'm I'm not very keen, so it's going to get it's going to get a mention. Um, the Spurs away shirt. Oh, for me, for me, it's it looks like. A, a, a painter's jug of you know all the water with all the paint mixed in, like Bob Ross's palette. That's what it looks like. I actually, um, I mean, obviously, uh, Tom's might got an opinion. I don't actually mind that, to be honest. I prefer that to West Ham's home kit this year. No, no really? chance. No chance. Do you know what it is? It's a fashion shirt, and I, it pisses me off. Being sometimes I, I like to be a well, say sometimes I I like to say I'm a kit traditionalist. They're not Spurs colours at all in any way. Do you know what I mean? Stick to stick to the colours. That is just it's just the fashion shirt, which you see a lot of these days, obviously. So that's why it gets me back up, and I'm not a big fan of it. I'd still rather stick to the blue or thoughts, yellow. Thoughts on that, Tom? Yeah, not a fan at all. Not a fan. Mm -hmm. The thing is, though, with these shirts, 
come the end of the season, if you, if there's a memorable moment in that shirt, it'll stay yeah. in your memory. And, and do you know what I mean? It, then it'll be a classic shirt. But it looks like, and I, I think I've said this to you, someone's taken a picture of the Pebble Dash, put it on Microsoft <laughs> Paint and pressed invert colours. <laughs> and it's <laughs> like, no, nah, not having it, sorry. I mean, you mean, you say you need a special moment. I mean, Deli Ali scored a goal in it, so that must be worth something celebrating. I know, it's, it's, it's just a bad celebration <laughs> with it, though. It's like, you, you should take a goal off him for that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he's doing, yeah. So yeah, I thought I'd have to give that one a shout out just because I'm not not much of a fan of it. Um, and my last one I've picked, I think we should know what's coming. It's called the Massive Stir the last sort of week or so. Uh, it is, of course, the template. If it'll come up. Uh, the Manchester City third shirt, the, the Puba template. That is just utter bollocks and utter... It's, it's just pure capitalising on a new market. Like, I've heard people saying... This is this is this was designed for the Super League, you know the American Asian oh, market. Okay. Don't need the spawn, don't need the badge. Just want the name on it so people know who it is, and it's just to just to purely try and reach new markets. I know the the crests are in, like, sort of printed onto the actual shirt themselves. Embedded into it, yeah. It just looks fucking shit. That's was, all. It a, was it a Fenerbahce player who scored the other night and wanted to kiss the badge? And he's yeah. just confused at his own shirt. Yeah. So. In the, the sort of the Conference League or whatever it is, the Europa Conference League. Yeah, it's, it's not just Man City that are guilty of this. And obviously, me and Aaron are United fans. It's not, it's just obviously it's Premier League, but a few yeah. kids, yeah. Uh, you know, because, you know, sort of Puma have done this with. It's <laughs> all, it looks like something they warm up in uh, pre match. It, it, it looks um, like a deep work. We've accused Leno of wearing a shirt that he shouldn't be wearing on the field. None of the players should be wearing that outfield. That's a terrible kit. The sponsor looks like it'd be at the belly button, at least on that from there, what I can see. I don't know, it might be higher up, but oh, it's awful. That's so bad. I don't know if I know any City fans who actually like that as a kit. It's awful. Tom, what were you thinking? It's like something you find... In sports world, you know, like in, in a box near the door where it's like three quid <laughs> at the end of the season. It's just... And the thing is, like, if it was something really innovative like that and it was and it looked cool, like, you'd say fair play, but it's just gash in it. Like, it's, <laughs> you, you just reminded me there saying that, Tom. It's like someone's mum said, I've got you a city top. And then they go, oh, can I have a look? And they go, I've got you this. And they go, that's not the city top. That's not the... Yeah. I'm not wearing that. Like, that's what it looks like, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, just, it, I, I, I've seen better knockoffs on on this on the beach in Tenerife. And I'm not even joking. I've seen better quality shirts than than that. That is fucking terrible. The only the only one I like, and it's the one I've seen get slagged off the most, is the Valencia one. And the only reason I like that is because it's got no sponsor, so it does just look like a you know a sort of nice T-shirt. Valencia, it's like a a light blue with an orange. Looks so quite nice. But that's the only one. Marseille one's okay, but is it Milan as well? AC Milan. Yeah, I don't like the Milan one. Don't like the Fenerbahce one. The Borussia Much and Gladbach one, I don't I don't really like. Um the very wise in just going for Borussia, not Borussia Much and Gladbach because he won't have enough bloody material for it. But yeah, they're not great. And the, the cheek that they can try and charge £70 for that is, oh, is, is disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. I even seen someone sort of a kit account on Twitter and they were like, Oh, I've got this, uh, I've got a code you can use to get money off. And it knocked it down to 52 quid. And I was like, that's still far too much. I would not pay that. I would not fucking pay that for that shirt. Absolutely not. And, you know, it's it's typical of, of these manufacturers. You know, fair, fair play to them trying something new. But, you know, you, you're trying to take the piss out of fans, aren't you, there? Because the, the Super League angle makes sense to me, Aaron, when you mentioned that. I didn't hear that before, but that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Um, that they were trying to franchise it like that to the neutral market. And so it is clear and obvious who people are supporting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, which makes it even more distasteful as well. <laughs> yeah, spit on it, James. <laughs> spit on it. So yeah, so that that was the the worst kit I think this season. Um, that definitely had to get a dishonourable mention. Um, so yeah, that was um, Kit Simons. Okay, so now we're going to get into a, a little new feature. We thought we'd try with you, Tom. Um, something new. Uh, so we, we've, me and James tried this in one of our very early pilots of Talking Kit. 
Um, and we thought, why not give it a go today and, and see how it goes. If it's shit, we'll get rid of it. If not, we'll so, keep it. So the guinea pig. <laughs> so this one, yeah, this feature is called Got Your Number. So basically what we do is we, it could be a journeyman or it could just be someone that's moved around a lot of clubs. And we'll just take a look at the numbers that they've wore during the career, uh, kind of rate them, have a look, have a chat and see, you know, some of the kits as well while we're at it. So, we thought, while he's uh, the burning subject of football at the minute, we we start off with uh, Lukaku. Obviously, he's just gone to Chelsea uh, from Inter Milan. So, we'll have a look at his sort of kit and number jersey. Uh, we're starting off with his um, debut for Anderlecht. Uh, beautiful, beautiful purple kit. Uh, and he was the number 36. 36. 36. See, I'm we getting... have a thing about kit numbers, don't we, Aaron? And... Oh, big time. Big yeah. time. But he would want to be what 16, 17 then. So he's obviously yeah, just... so he... sorry, go on. I was just gonna say he's a youth player, so you, you don't it's not terrible. You three plus six is nine. I don't know. I'm just trying to make some links for it to be a centre forward. But yeah, that, that was my thinking. You know, he's took thirty six for three, three plus three plus six, obviously is nine. Um very young looking, very slim. He's got the he's got the sort of the, the braids in. Uh, which he was he was known for back back in his early days. Um, they're not with Adidas anymore, Anderlecht, but it's an Adidas pink, uh, sorry, purple shirt. Uh, the shirt's got sort of like white pinstripes on it. Um, yeah, what are we thinking, Tom? Lukaku at Anderlecht. Well, the first thing I thought was if he was 16 then, that picture that you're showing of us two playing when we were like 14, 15. <laughs> <laughs> he, would, he would have been one Jesus of the dads. Christ. Oh, yeah. He'd have ripped us apart. Yeah. He'd, he'd have destroyed you. Have you ever seen the picture of him when he was 13 and he's playing? Yeah, yeah I've seen that. He had that to take ID, didn't he? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Team, he's he's so. bigger than, he's taller than the ref. And you think that, that whoever's been told to mark him must have been shitting themselves. Honest to God. This he, was. He was yeah, it's madness. This this was between 2009 and 2011. 33 goals in 73 appearances. So that's not bad, is it? All right. A youngster. It's, do you know, like, for, for a young player, he's, he looks ready there, doesn't he, though? Like, he's, like, yeah. you know, physically, you know if, if you look at any striker now and you see him when they made, like, the first few matches and they're just, like, a bit scrawny and stuff like that, I'm like, but he looks like he's, he's ready for it, doesn't he? Yeah, he is. So from there, for Anderlecht, he did then go to number 14. Um, whether that's a Thierry Henry reference, we don't know. But yeah, he doesn't suit 14 for me. I wouldn't put him on foot. If I had him on FIFA, I wouldn't have him as 14 or anything like no, that. No, no. Definitely not a 14 striker. Um, your thoughts on 14, Tom? Just snatching at anything, in it? It's a promotion. <laughs> 36, like, <laughs> close to a decent number. <laughs> but it's just like, yeah, get on that. Just give me 14. I'm yeah. not really about it. I'm not really, really about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then from Anderlecht, he then went to Chelsea. His first stint at Chelsea. Still, again, he, he looks, I think he looks younger there than he does in his Anderlecht. Yeah. 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 Um, number 18, good strike, a good number for a striker for me. I'd, I'll have that for a striker. One plus eight is nine. Someone, was he perhaps in Drogba's shadow at this point as well? Very much so, yeah. He was there, oh. obviously, there when Drogba was there. Uh, obviously, looks up to Drogba. Drogba's kind of his, one of his idols. Um, but no, yeah, I'm, I like that as a, a number, number 18. Yeah, I think... I, I, do you know what? I find it really interesting when he first went to Chelsea because it was supposed to be... I think that was Drogba's last season, wasn't it? Um, he was going to... Drogba was going to go and then Lukaku was going to take his place, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it just didn't work out, did it? And, um, <clears throat> his, that, first stint, his first stint at Chelsea, 2011, 2014, 10 appearances, no goals. So, yeah, it didn't didn't quite work out. The, no. the ironic thing with it was with Mourinho, because Mourinho come back, didn't he, for 2013, yeah. 14. Um, with Mourinho, it's all about trust, isn't it? Um, yeah. Lukaku missed a penalty in the Super Cup against Bayern Munich. And it was a, it was yeah. a shocking penalty. And that that just that finished his Chelsea career, and it was it was ironic that Drogba finished his Chelsea career with apparently against Bayern Munich and so did Lukaku. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, for different reasons, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, from then uh, Chelsea obviously not working out, and a shite penalty ended his career. He, he was on loan 
I believe, at um, West Brom. For it was it was alone for a season, wasn't it? If I'm, yeah. if I'm right in thinking, uh, number twenty, number twenty, and I have to say about this shirt, that could be a West a West Brom shirt from any period in the world. They all look they all look the fucking same. Like it's just a template. Um, they're not even with Adidas anymore, but that could be this season shirt. Easy. Um, so yeah, number twenty again, not a bad number for a striker. Famous United striker had number number twenty. Uh, two striker, that's the Van Persie yeah. and Ollie. Uh, so I'm happy with that. I'll take that for a striker. Uh, what are you thinking, James? Uh, 20 is fine. That works. A lone player as well. Still a young lad. I like the um, red squad uh, squad number. I think Newcastle did something similar. That's because they're wearing stripes, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, just no clash on the back of the shirt. 20 is fine. I don't know how many appearances he's got for West Brom. 35. Let's see if a goals or appearances has got into Wikipedia. Can't imagine he got 35 goals in a season. Must have been appearances. Must have been appearances. I, I know he's, he scored a hat trick, didn't he, against United on the last day of the season? Fergie's last, 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 last game, game the 5 all, um, which was just a free for all, really, wasn't it? Great way to, to for Fergie to bow out. But I think even then, it's shown that he was a talent there. You know, West Brom, he really cut his teeth, shown he could do it in the Premier League. Um, what are you thinking, Tom? Yeah, I think, they didn't, was it a deadline day he went? I think it might be, you know, yeah. and so I think to, to grab number 20 is a deadline day move. It's not not a bad number to get. You, you can, yeah. Again, you're kind of just snatching at anything, aren't you? But yeah, it's, it's funny you said that about the, the West Brom shirts. They're, just, they're always the same. It's like Wimbledon from like 1994 to 1999. <laughs> I swear they just played in the same shirt. <laughs> Knowing how Wimbledon was rough, it probably was. Yeah, to be honest. definitely. Definitely. They have to wash it themselves as well. But, but, um, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was, that was a nice shirt. He, I remembered that season. He was he was on fire. And, like he was a real presence. Um, yeah, I think West Brom struggled a bit that season, but it, like yeah. he he was outstanding. And that that's always a good sign when a player goes on loan in a struggling team and they're getting like racking up the numbers and that. Um, yeah, you kind you kind of knew he was. He was he was good enough for the Premier League. He didn't really get that much of a chance at Chelsea, did he? No, definitely not. You were going to say something, uh, James? Yeah, that's all it was. You mentioned obviously a hat trick uh, against Manchester United. I was looking up at his Wikipedia um, page earlier on. Uh, so, 26th of May 2014, he scored his first international hat trick in a pre-tournament friendly against Luxembourg. Um, but according to FIFA, it doesn't count as a hat trick. The reason is. Um, it's not recognised an official match because they had seven subs instead of the permitted six. So they chalked oh. off his hat trick. And I just think if you're a goal poacher, <laughs> you'd want that on your record, wouldn't you? You'd be oh. a little bit annoyed. I, I know, you, I know. Pele would have something to say about that, wouldn't he? <laughs> he's, he's counting him. He's counting the half his goals as his own. He's had them right off. They're going spare. I'm fucking having them. Um, but he, I know he has become obviously Belgium's top scorer, and we're going to show a couple of Belgium kits in a minute. But um, yeah, them extra three obviously would would obviously help. And like you say, goal goal scorer, he's definitely going to want um, going to want those goals in it without a shadow of a doubt. Um, so from from West Brom, he then made the move to Everton and took the number this, seventeen shirt. This was a long move as well, I think, just prior to him having a permanent move there. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on seventeen, Aaron? For a striker, I mean, it's not it's not conventional. Um, it gets a pass from me for um, Henrik Larsson wearing it for United, so he kind of gets away with it. Um, I know he Mobley wears it, don't he? At the minute, can't think of too many other strikers that wear seventeen. Um, I've got another picture of him wearing it there. Score a goal. Um, it's all right. It's not the greatest, but it's it, it's not it's not the worst number. You know, it's not a a number five like Barash or number two like Kone or three like Jean. So yeah, I guess uh, it passes for me. I think you mentioned Henrik Larson. I think because he used to wear seven at Celtic and Barca, seventeen is one, almost one All seven. Right. Yeah, eighteen. Yeah. It, I don't know. It's <laughs> it's up there. With, it's up there as fourteen for me. The seventeen. It's sort of neither here nor there. Um. 15 goals, 31 appearances for Everton in that season, 13-14. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, um, 17 on the shot. Don't know. I wouldn't give it my striker if, if I had the option. Put it that way. Don't know what your thoughts yeah. are, Tom. I feel like he, by this point, he just needs a break, doesn't he? Like he's just had like dreadful numbers. Like he's not had the striker's <laughs> number yet, has he? Do you know what I mean? He's not, he's not yeah. been anywhere, and it's like yeah, there's the number nine. You're you the are striker. a striker, but uh, yeah. I think at this point, it was it was showing like he was he was brilliant. Because I think was it half a season or a full season he had on loan at Everton, and then they signed him permanently. But he was he was tremendous for him and. Those night kits that season Everton had, they were insane. I think they had an away one that was yellow with blue stripes on the sleeve. And yeah, yeah all, I think they had three kits that season. They were all really nice. I, I remember thinking when Everton went to Nike, I was like, that's such a weird combination. Like, because Everton had always been, you know, apart from the FA Cup in 95, for me anyway, in my lifetime, a middle of the table club, a bit like a Northern Spurs. It's kind of here, nor there. <laughs> So when he went to Nike, I was like, that's such a it didn't last too long, did it? I know did he go back to uh Umbro not long Umbro. after? That? Yeah. Um, but no, I think it's a decent kit that's very nice. The Ever the Everton crest has always been good as well. It's a classy badge. Um but no, yeah, like you say, first season there, uh, number 17. And then I think Tom will be happy he finally got a decent number. Uh, they went back to Umbro. Uh, he got number 10, which is you know, famous strikers for Tottenham were number 10. So, um, yeah, a, a nice Umbro shirt. Um, like, again, love an Umbro shirt. Chang is the, the sponsor. Um, what are we thinking, lads? Don't look happy, does he, with it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I think, um, yeah, he was, he was main man there, weren't he? Like, spot on. Like, great number for him. And, yeah, again, great kit. I, th I think, I can't remember that many bad Everton kits. That's a beauty, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, Everton consistently have great kits. Uh, 110 appearances between 14 and 17, 53 goals. So he's not. He's got good numbers, really, Lukaku. Um, like almost one, one in two, is it? Like, almost. Yeah, which is sort of the golden ratio, really, isn't it, that you'd want. Um yeah. Some really good numbers. He was their main man, wasn't he, for a time there as well, I think. Yeah. They played to his strengths, definitely. Um, I quite, yeah, obviously, number 10, that's that's what you'd want, isn't it? If you're going to be a striker, uh, 10 or obviously nine, which I'm sure we'll come on to. But yeah, finally, he's got a number and he's been given sort of the, like you say, the reassurance that he's there, is their sort of main man. Yeah. And then from there, he went to, um, I'd say, an ill fated spell, Manchester United. Um, I picked that. I picked that picture for varying reasons. One, that that was pretty much his face the whole time he was at the club, looking pissed off. Two, it's my the worst United shirt of all time, and this happened a lot with this kit that they wanted United to wear black shorts all the time, and they wore white more often than not. So that whole gradient thing didn't ever didn't ever come to pass. It was just every now and again at home, but. That's that's Old Trafford, you can tell, that game. Uh, obviously, in the Champions League. So, yeah, got his number nine. Took it off Martial, which caused issues. Um, oh, well, he took it off. It was off Slatan, wasn't it? Slatan, he took it off Martial, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, he, obviously, Martial still was at number 11. Um, so, he took it off. Slatan, who Slatan went to number 10. That's what I'm getting confused with. Uh, when Rooney went back to Everton. Um, so, yeah, he got his number nine. Um any thoughts on these on this and this shirt, boys? Go on, Tom. Yeah, I think I know what you're saying with like the gradient. I think that same season we had the same, and it went white and then dark blue at the bottom to, to merge to the shorts. And uh, yours was a lot better. Yours was classy. Worked well, well. We when we played in the Champions League final, we went for all white, so we just looked like a bunch of knobheads. You know, it's just <laughs> like you know when you're in PE at school and you forgot your shorts and you just like grabbing spares and stuff. It, it was like the gradient was down and then it was just white shorts. Like the biggest game in your club's history. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I didn't like that shirt. Um, he started really well. I remember he was, um, he scored, was it two against West Ham in the opening game of the season? Um, yeah. And it looked like it was the right move. And I don't know what happened because he kind of, he'd always 
seemed to score like two or three in a match. And it, I don't know, I thought, I really thought he would make that number nine is for years and for whatever reason it didn't work out. But yeah, I think it's funny because sometimes when you see like how players progress, his shirt number's kind of gone with it, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it, I think when he when he went from Everton, there was a lot of hype about him, and, and rightly so. And, and it was a shame, really, it didn't work out. Yeah, James? Yeah, Prim is a 9 and a 10, uh, just as his squad number, if we're going to uh, go off that. like, I mean, there was still question marks when he was signed, you know, what would he do at United? And at the time, people saying United struggled against the smaller teams, and that's that's where Lukaku sort of comes into his own, and he's, he can bully the, the, the smaller teams. I think that's a bit unfair, really, because I think he's shown since that he can do it sort of week in, week out consistently. I think there was a couple of games against Arsenal where he was just given sort of... They almost said, I think it was Phil Neville in commentary, said he, he cheated in a way because he was just hanging off the fullback he was pushing on, and he just... He was just in there all the time, causing causing them nightmares. Um, and he did have some good games for United, but perhaps not, perhaps not in terms of the club's history. Their traditional centre forward, like sometimes it looked like he couldn't trap a bag of cement. You know, his first touch was just not quite there. Yeah, I think it's since come out he had sort of uh, medical issues and stuff, which perhaps meant he wasn't always at his peak. But um, Obviously, you see him now, and you, and, and you question, you know, what you know, what it could have been. I guess it's like you have, you have that girlfriend; it doesn't work out, and then you see her a few years later, looking stunning, and you, and you just wonder what if. But it is what it is, and we move on. But yeah, definitely like him as, as a number nine there. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Like it was, it sure didn't work out. Like obviously, by the by the end, I think I was more critical of him just because it wasn't working out, and it was best for all parties for him to go. I know every time he scores a goal, or every time he was scoring a goal for Inter. You know, rival fans are getting on United's back. Oh, yeah, you wanted to sell him, and you think, well, at the time, it worked out best for everyone because he wasn't, he wasn't vital to the way Oli wanted to play when Oli took over. He was never going to fit that system, and he didn't want to be there. So, you know, what's the point in hanging on to a player just to try and fit him into a system that's never going to work for him? You know, in the Mourinho era, he put on a lot of weight. Uh, whether he was bulking up or whatever, and it just it kind of slowed him down when he, you know, everything he was slim and he was fast. You know, really bullying, bullying t uh, defenders like he is now. Uh, and it's a shame, and it, you know, it could, you know, you, you could watch in this season, he could hit 25, 30 goals. You could say, is it bit United in the backside? Hopefully, it's not going to be like that. But I can see him having a great season. Uh, obviously, we'll talk on a little bit later. But for United, it's a shame it didn't work out. But by the end, by by this time, it, it was the best for everyone really that that he moved on. So yeah, he did move on, and then. Just he sorry, just to go back to that quickly. Yeah, uh, sure, yeah. He goals in sixty-six appearances for United. So you can see that ratio drop slightly. So obviously, you can tell yeah. he was an unhappy Confidence. spell. Yeah, Confidence went through the roof, didn't it? Uh, food floor, sorry, in that last season. Uh, so yeah, he went over to Italy uh, to Inter. Uh, this is the season. Obviously, he won the Scudetto with them. Uh, like again, like you say, number nine, main man, suits it, slimmed down, worked on his game under Conte, became a became a better striker. Um, thoughts on that, Tom? Yeah, it did just everything that was rough around the edges at Man United. Just he worked on, he adapted. He looks like an all-round better striker. And I don't, I don't know, you see that highlight reels of his like dodgy touches and stuff like that. But like when he was dropping deep, he was dropping deep at the right times. He was pushing on at the right times, and like you could just see like he developed so much in the team. Like it is, it's like a it's more like a game of chess over there, isn't it? But yeah. I think he learned so much from that time. And like he, he lost, he lost a lot of weight. He looked faster. He looked sharper. He just, he looked like he did when he was at Everton, but smarter. Um, I think when you, when you, when you see him now, I think Man United could do with that now. You know, just like because you could see with Cavani, you know, the last few months of the season, just sticking it in into the box. Yeah. You've got someone there. He, he can score 15 20 easily like okay. i think i think bruno would absolutely love to play with him yeah. i think he's the kind of striker bruno would, would be crying out for and you know if you believe the rumors are going to try to go for Haaland, maybe even Lewandowski and mbappe which I, I don't understand um you know he i think he wants that focal point you've seen it the link up he's got with cavani a little bit even getting assists from cavani's worked really well and like you say I, I, listening to the interview uh, with lukaku yesterday before the arsenal game he said 
you know, I worked on my game really hard. So when I, I always wanted to play, you know, running at defenders, taking defenders on, I never really wanted to play more back to goal. Learn that on the Conte, uh, Conte, sorry, and that's that's helped me provide uh, provide more assists to my teammates. You know, and and no wingers and midfielders love strikers that can do that for you rather than just wanting to bag goals all the time and stuff. You know, you've seen it yourself with Kane. He, he's dropped deeper and started to to add that to his game as well. So you know it. It, it, the game, the game, and the forward game is moving on for strikers now, and I think them becoming more creators rather than just goal scorers is, is what the game is crying out for. And, and he's he's done done the business over in Italy and proved proved he can play that way. Uh, what are you saying, James? Yeah, really like that kit. Big fan of that kit uh, from Inter. Is that the last season with Pirelli as well? That's last, sad... last, yeah. last one with Pirelli, mate. Yeah. Very sad times, but no, love that kit. Number nine, love the black shorts as well with that. Um, 47 in 72. Say what you like about Serie A, but it's still a it's still a top league. And yeah, yeah. Um, I love the I love the the shaven head Lukaku as well compared to some of the rascal haircuts he had <laughs> back in the day. Um, the Anderlecht one springs to mind and stuff like that. Again, he was a kid, but this this new Lukaku, if you like, uh, even a fan of him in gloves there as well. I know you just picked that randomly there. Uh, having that picture, but yeah, I didn't. Not the gloves weren't on purpose. Very ornery esque as well. That, uh, yeah. but no, yeah, I think he's he's proven. He sort of justified, um, you know, the hype that surrounded him when he initially left Everton because it was always, well, can he do it at that, at that level? And I think <clears> he proved it into that he could do that. So yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I just got to throw this one in there because it made me laugh, and it's um, probably one of the best shirts Inter have had in the last few years uh, after he left. Uh, went to his next, which we'll speak about. Uh, um, this popped up oh, on social media. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you're going to do it, you can't be bothered to. Uh, I mean, you just like you said in you said in that group chat, James. You just wear it with a car come on you. I mean, you know, or just not wear it, or yeah, I don't yeah, know. But yeah. to do that, I don't know. Were people saying people are doing it with social media? But I just that just looks ridiculous. It's, stu- it's stupid, isn't it? But what what year is that shirt from? Is that so last that's, season? That's the third shirt from last season, which has obviously been rehashed a couple of times. First one was in was it ninety seven, ninety eight? Yeah, Ronaldo, Ronaldo, Ronaldo it. yeah, yeah. And then it was brought back out two thousand and five, two thousand and six. Adriano, when it had yeah, I was, I was getting Adriano vibes from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've so yeah, done, yeah. done an, another one, and I absolutely love that shirt. It's uh, one of the best ones they've had for a while. But yeah, um, Jacko now taking the number nine shirt over at Inter. Um, so, yeah, that means, obviously, Lukaku left and he's gone full circle, in a way. He skipped one club. But, yeah, gone full circle, back at Chelsea, wearing a number nine, bald head, meaning business, scored on his debut. Um, yeah, any any thoughts on this? Who wants to take the lead on this one? I think it's um, a good move from us. I was kind of surprised um, a little bit when they were going back in for him. I think perhaps... <laughs> finances football wise in Italy forced in his hand with that move. Um perhaps they'll be able to finally afford to pay for him now. Uh for <laughs> off United. But um yeah I was kind of surprised. But I think he wanted the move as well. I think he came out and said this is my opportunity now. And I think he will have a point to prove in the Premier League. Um I'm hoping Varane will be match fit and raring to go by the time um <laughs> he comes sort of to play at Old Trafford and obviously Stamford Bridge against United because I think he, he will have a point that he'll want to prove. Um, I think he'll do well under uh, uh, Tuchel there. And I would say Chelsea would be favourites this season. Uh, not just off the back of that signing, but I think he does sort of complete that jigsaw for them a little bit, uh, more so than sort of the end of last season for them. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I agree with you on that point, Tom. Yeah, I think this is the perfect move from I think he couldn't have gone from Man United to Chelsea. He needed to go somewhere to kind of like reinvent himself, get his confidence back because it is he's, he's a completely different player. He looks different, he's playing different. Um yeah, I think it's it's a perfect signing for Chelsea. Um do you know what I really like that shirt as well? Um it, yeah. it, I thought at first how far away is he holding the other end because the square's got a pity on it, but uh, <laughs> But yeah, no, it's that's 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 smart. Um, yeah, no, I, th- I think they. I mean, they won the Champions League w- w- without him. It's just gonna make them a lot stronger. I think they've yeah. got everything now. I think because they've got, they've got all those like kind of like little nippy players who are going out wide. It's kind of similar to Man United, really. Um, 
you just need that focal point who's just going to bully people. He'll drop deep and create space in behind. He'll bundle a load in. He'll, he'll, he can score every kind of goal. He's, um, he's, he's just a perfect all-round striker. And um, I saw a few things about Chelsea struggling with number nines. I think like they had Viale, Hasselbank, and then they, they went through a few really weird things. I remember the defender, Bula Ruse. Bula Ruse, yeah, war number yeah, nine. Number Steve, nine. Dutch guy, yeah. Kesman. Steve, Kesman, Steve Sidwell. Sidwell. <laughs> Sidwell, that's a bad one, that, isn't it? Torres, obviously wore it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I see him, you know, reinventing himself again here at the Premier League, showing that he is that complete striker, showing what he's learning in Italy, making sure, you know, being success in that number nine shirt and... I agree with you, James. They, they are the t- watching them. They are the team to be this season, and they're so strong in every department. You know, you, can you look past them? If City get a striker, you know, I think they will need a striker eventually. But even if they get a couple of injuries, you know, you, you look yesterday, Chelsea, and they brought Kante on, and it's like it's, it almost seems like it's not fair. And when you compare it to the United midfield, you're like, you know, they got COVID, COVID hits Mount, um, Jorginho, Kante. You got real, real depth in that department, and they just, they just look great. And then they needed that, that focal point, that, that twenty-five to thirty goal striker. Um, and yeah, you can't really look past him. I don't think for the league, he's, he's kind of looks like he's, he's determined. He's, a, he's full of confidence. He looks like a different person to the one. If you look back at the United, the, the United picture, um, I'll just throw that back up. He looks like a different person. Everything, you know, I know it's a, it's a, it's a still photo, but he just, you know, was totally ready to go, ready to, to smash the league. Um, so, yeah, he's obviously got one in one, in one James. Uh, so, I've done your stats for you there. One in one, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we'll quickly go on to Belgium. A couple of kits. I mean, you may see one there. Um, so, okay, yeah, number, number, uh, number 20 there. Um I can't, you know, for the life of me, I, I can't think of that that uh, manufacturer. But he went from sort of like Adidas Nike, didn't he, or Nike to this? It's like begins with B or something like that. I can't remember what it what it's called, but it looks like a proper sort of Malta or Gibraltar kind of like kit, doesn't it? Like minnows. You wouldn't expect Belgium yeah, to be like, wearing that. like they'd have the number on the back, but not the name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all like that team that was in the. Um, Europa Conference when it was raining and all the numbers fell off the kit and the names. You oh, see really? That, you see that during the week, yeah. I think it was one of the Russian teams. And they had to draw them on. They had to draw the numbers and names back on because he just couldn't. The manufacturer had let them down. Um, and probably one of my favourite kits he's wore for Belgium from the uh, World Cup in 2018. Back in his number nine. Not 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 keen on the font. No, I was going to say that, yeah. The font. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't a great one. It reminds me of um, Germany. In that World Cup, they were absolutely terrible. You know, giving it the big room of all that, the, the the green, the green away kit, and the the reworking of the nineteen ninety kit, and it got knocked out, didn't they? By was it South Korea? They got knocked out by in the group stages. Uh, but so, so yeah, so obviously Belgium. So how many goals did you say he scored for for Belgium, James? Well, I've not. I was going to see. I was going to give you his caps and see if you wanted to have a guess between you both. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah, okay, um, I'll do that. So, have you, is, is this is this last kit you got to show for him? For this Belgium? Is the last one. Yeah, this is the last one, yeah. 98 caps for Belgium. He is their top goal scorer, I believe. If you want to have a guess, how many he's got, Tom? Oh, I bet he's got some dead good, I mean, I'm going to say 64. But it should be 67, but he had that actually taken off him against Luxembourg. Go on, Aaron. See... If- for some reason, I've got. I think he's. I think he's got more. He's got more. I think he might have more that. Like, for some reason, I want to say over hundred, but I don't think he's got over hundred goals for them. Uh, I'm gonna say seventy-six. Well, I should have topped. I should have stopped you when Tom had a guess. Sixty-four goals in ninety-eight appearances. Well, yeah. for what did I say? Did I say that? You got it right on the nose. Yeah, sixty-four yeah, goals. For Belgium. Good, yeah. Well done. So well done. Thank you. Very good ratio, but yeah. Yeah, no, great. Yeah, like I say, leading goal scorer. Should, like I said, should be 67 um, with that hat trick. But yeah, no, I enjoyed that. That was... Um, suits you, sir. Suits 
You, no, he wasn't. He's telling lies. He's got your number. That's what it was. Got your number. <laughs> I, I, will, I will get head round these when we do them more often. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you join that, Tom. Is that all right? Yeah, keeper? yeah. Buzzing. Huh? Nice one. That was a keeper, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 100%. 100. It's, do you know what? It's really good when you see certain shirts and numbers and like it, it just gives you all sorts of memories. Don't it? I remember when you showed me that Everton one. I remember he absolutely tormented Arsenal and they beat him 3 yeah. 0. And he was just everywhere, and he's uh, yeah, that was that was fun to watch. <laughs> Brilliant. So we're gonna get into our last feature now. You are watching, listening to Talking Kit. Okay, so finishing the show off with what is possibly. I want to say it's not my favourite feature that we're gonna do on this show. Um, so it's the first time we've done it. Um. And it's a, I've, you may have heard of it. It's a reworking of uh, a famous feature you might hear on radio. So this one is called um, Desert Island Kits. So it's like a reworking of Desert Island. This, you may have heard of it, a little small feature. It's been going for like 55 million years or something like that. I don't know. Um, so yeah, what we do is when we have a guest on, even though Tom's not technically a guest, he's a guest host, but before I let him have a go. Um, so Desert Island Kits is um, we ask our guests to name a home shirt, uh, an away shirt, and a third shirt or wild card um, that they would take away to a Desert Island with them. So we've asked Tom and he sent over his uh, free shirts. So we'll kick off with the first one, which is your home shirt, Tom. Uh, so yeah, let us know why you've chosen this one. It's just got everything on it. It's got great kit manufacturer, great sponsor, big collar. It's got the three stripes on it. It's it's just really, really classic. Um, it's the first Spurs shirt that I got. Um, not amazing memories on the pitch with it. I think we bought Sergei Rebrov as our record signing, and he <laughs> wore that for a season. Um, we, we ended up signing Andy Booth as an emergency loan. Because Ferdinand Armstrong, yeah. Rebrov, and Everson were all injured. Um, but yeah, no, it's just, just a great kit. It's everything you want from, from a home shirt, isn't it? And we had it for two seasons as well, which was what you kind of took for granted back then. But yeah, no, it's got everything. Just a really, really, it's, it's a perfect shirt for me. I think going back from what you said at the start, uh, where you said you like it to be quite plain, quite understated nothing too special with a sponsor and obviously a collar as well so you've like ticked off three things in, the, yeah. in your box there with with, with that kit definitely so, uh, it's, it's a nice it's a nice little home kit to be honest it is. the whole the holston it just screams tottenham done it like when you see it Got his, oh, yeah it's just classic isn't it the blue against the white it just looks just looks like proper i liked i liked it when the the, the badge as well kind of had the the bottom bit was like a yellow and red as well yeah yeah there. Look quite nice. I had a bit again red on your shirt. Just can't get away from it, can you? No. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's your your home shirt. Um, so moving on, we'll go to your away shirt. Oh, we're not. Is that your away shirt? Yeah, it is. I yeah, yeah it is. Um, yeah. Just not Tottenham. Um, so it's yeah. Tell us about this one. This it was a toss up between this and the France '98 home shirt. Um, my thinking was. Couldn't go to a desert island with two white shirts because they'd both get filthy. <laughs> so I've gone with the away shirt. I love both of them. It's just great memories of this one. Like I, I realized when I was when I was picking these, it's like it's nostalgia and like sentimental reasons as well. Like remember us beating Colombia uh, in the World Cup with this shirt. It was just it's just a great shirt. It's um, it's quite nineties. It was it was baggy. Um, it was just just a great shirt. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think England wore it that many times before France '98. I think they might have only worn it like once or twice. But yeah. after France '98, they, they wore it all the time. They, they wore it in qualifiers for Euro 2000 at home in two matches. Um, I remember that. Yeah, I think Skull scored a hat trick against Poland in it at home, and I think yeah. it might have been Sweden. They, they played in it at home. I think that was while. The France Night 8 home shirt had kind of gone out and they were waiting to bring in the Euro 2000 shirt, so they tried to sell a few more of them. But, um, yeah, just great memories. Um, yeah, just great players. Just It's yeah. just a good time. It was 
just uh, I was kids my first World Cup and it was just exciting. And uh, yeah, that Columbia match was brilliant. Yeah, that, that Beckham free kick in that kit was uh, was brilliant. Um, <clears throat> one thing about Umbro kits in the night is they were absolutely great in putting stuff in, ingrained in the shirt. You know, yeah, like yeah. You think he, the United shirt with the stadium with Old Trafford in the back of it. Obviously, these were the Saint the Saint George's flags, <laughs> um, really quite prominent. They were they were brilliant, I, and you know they used to do it all the time. It's kind of like their thing back in the nineties. So, um, I think this is one of the first shirts I remember as well that just had Umbro on it, that just said Umbro. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think you know I think United's kit from around that that time was, was similar as well. So, yeah, it, like like you say, mate, it just brings back you know memories of the, the ninety eight World Cup. Um, and yeah, like yeah, Scholesy scoring them. That hat trick as well, mad. It's mad. Yeah, I he had ball one of them, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. yeah. I don't I thought about that until you literally just said it. Then, like, it, it's mad how you look at something and then it just it just had these memories yeah, yeah. from the back. Uh, what are you thinking, James? I'll tell you what I like about it, and then I'll tell you what I dislike about it, and the reason why. The umbro I like just just sort of the rather than like you say rather than the uh, logo. I like the England badge central. Then I normally like it sort of over the heart. When it's a like a crest, but yeah. I do quite like that central. Loving the long sleeve as well. I'm not too sure if that was deliberate to be picked yeah, out. Well, the, long sleeve. the dislike is the England the Saint George cross embedded into it. It reminds me of like a pro evolution game when they didn't have like the rights <laughs> to the kits and they've sort of just put that on as like a afterthought a little bit. I don't I don't know if I like that, especially like the the, the ones going sort of vertically down as well the smaller one but they're trying to make a cross within i don't know that's, that's not the only downside on that kit to be honest i, I love the, the color color on that as well but yeah the, the saint george's cross i'm not too sure about yeah i i thought that before when he was, we talk about the the saint george's flags in the kit because it doesn't go up to the top so i was thinking no. obviously not done across also another thing i just picked up on that i don't like is the, the fact it says england under the the badge and then it also has a registered trademark on it as well. I'm like, why do you need to have that on the front, yeah. on the front of a shirt? Not to slag off your kits, Tom. We're not having a go here, mate. Well, I was, just, I was wondering if I'll be on the, the desert, desert, won't I? So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's your desert, mate. You can have what you want. Yeah. <laughs> like, you I was wondering if like the England would say if it was like an, an official shirt, it would say England versus whoever. But I, yeah, if you're going to purchase that and it's got the trademark symbol, I don't know. Yeah. But no, yeah, great, great kit. Like I said, I'm not. I do like it. Um, James is just making me slag it off, Tom. So blame him. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you need you need a bit of discussion. You need a talking point, don't you? Yeah, that, that's it. That's it. So we'll move on finally to your third shirt that you've chosen. And I, I know, I know why you picked this. I can tell I, I, straight away. It, it brings memories to my mind. I'm not even a Spurs fan. So yeah, tell us what kit it is, and then obviously why you've chosen it. This is the 2018-19 third shirt. And going back to what we were saying before when we saw the current Spurs away shirt, you know where it's just like, it's just a style thing. When this come out, it was just like a bit odd. I think it was I think it was only released a picture of it the day before the opening day that when we wore it. Oh, and yeah. I weren't a massive fan. We wore it quite a few times that season. Um, we didn't have a bad record in it. But it, it, was, it was just like nothing special. It was just a bit... It out there, weren't it? Yeah, and then um, I think the pattern on it was something to do with blueprints around where the new stadium was being built. And because the new stadium should have been built at this point, but it was delayed, so we ended up just looking like knobheads <laughs> for a year. And then, um, but yeah, but it was there was just two massive nights in it. Um, first one was at the Etihad quarterfinals in the Champions League, um, yeah, when Lorente scored with a part of his body, which everyone's got a different opinion on but <laughs> that was a great night we we're one nil up from the first leg and two minutes in city equalized so it was one one on aggregate and uh and then within 10 minutes we just had two chances just buried them both just really kind of just cut throat and it was just you know a big occasion a big match and like your team's doing something good you like you just you just can't help just get really kind of emotionally attached to everything involved with that um and that, to be honest, that would have been enough because it was a, that was a like a big night. But then, semi-final in Amsterdam, just 
it, it will go down as the, the best <laughs> night ever for Spurs. Because obviously the final was terrible. Yeah. Um, just everything about that. It was just such a. a if Tottenham were going to win a semi-final of a big match, that is the Tottenham way to do it. Like lose the first like one nil and then be two nil down at half time. Like <laughs> the dreadful goals to concede. And um, I remember I watched. I was in Landud now going to a gig, and watched first half in a pub, and I just had the biggest paddy ever. Two nil down at half time. Champions League final. I had to leave, and I was just squealing abuse. I thought we're never in this position again. It was just gutless, and then that. Second half, it's just uh, we're just a team possessed, and it's just we wanted it and everything around. It. Just that when I see that shirt, I just see like the players crying, Pochettino crying. Just it, it was just everything. That's all you'd ever want supporting your club and seeing something like that. It was uh, a really special night, and uh, yeah, that that shirt will just be top tier, be legendary forever, just because of that. Um, Brings those yeah. memories straight I'm, back. Do you know what? I'm, I'm getting quite emotional. About <laughs> it, yeah. I can see. I, yeah, can yeah. see I can see that. Um, no, I, I I really like this kit. Like I say, it's sort of two shades of green. And I think the white, obviously, of the, the sponsor, the night tick, and obviously the badge just works just works really well as a kit. If we're gonna if we're gonna throw it to one of our other features that we've done, shirt impressions. When I look at that shirt, it just reminds me of Mora straight away. I yeah, look yeah, at it, at Lucas Mora just straight away, obviously. That goal against Ajax, unbelievable scenes. Um, but no, it's, it's a great third kit. Um, Nike, Nike, Nike have had a bit of a lull, I think, in the last few years, but sometimes you just pull something out of the bag and this is definitely one, definitely one they did for you. Uh, it's uh, Still still looks like a great kit now, a couple of years after uh, it came out. What are we saying, James? Yeah, really nice kit. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't have looked at that kit. and I, I mean, obviously, I, I do know the semi-finals but i wouldn't necessarily associate with it but just hearing tom talk about it just makes you realize how we why we do this uh you know this this show in the first place this podcast because this is what it's all about it's sort of yeah. the memories as well and how it makes people feel so it's great it's a nice kit i mean it does smack a little bit of the third kit from this season but um just obviously not as loud um but no um it's a, it's, it's great to hear tom talk about it like that to be honest and uh yeah, it's a nice little kit. If you were to choose one out of the three, what would you go for, Tom? It's got to be this one. But Ooh. the thing is, though, if I was on a desert island thinking practicalities with it, I suppose I could like mingle in with like alligators or something like that. You know, if, if they, they were knocking around, <laughs> can get a sea and all that, wouldn't I? Or you could just stick it in a tree and now would ever get it. Yeah, if it's not yeah. long grass, you could just camouflage yourself in it. You'd, yeah. be, you'd be all right. I know it's three, three great kits there, mate. You've, you've chosen well. Um, it's a great, great kit. Um, so, yeah, that was our first Desert Island Disc. If any of you would like to get involved in Desert Island Disc, I would love people to get involved. Um, leave a comment on what your three favourite shirts are, home, uh, away. And third, if you want to get involved in the show and any of the features we do, and you can always email those. We're at talkingkit at gmail.com. Um, yeah, and get involved in the show because, you know, without without you getting involved, we're pr practically normally three idiots just talking to each other, isn't it, really? That's pretty much what it is. <laughs>
Brighton wear, as you'll know, white and blue stripes. Watford wear yellow usually, but we're wearing a red uh, away shirt. No reason why they couldn't wear yellow. Um, so that would piss me off. So what we'll do is we'll go through the fixtures. We'll talk about it, give a little uh, preview. We'll also talk about any sort of kit clashes or non-kit clashes or no real reason to wear uh, an away shirt or third shirt when you don't need to. But yeah, I thought, me and James thought we'd do a little summer extra, some more content for Talking Kit. Uh, yeah, hopefully you'll join us. We're doing about half nine, aren't we, on, um, yes. on, on Friday. But yeah, check out the socials. Make sure you're following us. Um, it's at Talking Kit, pretty much anywhere you can find us. Twitter, Instagram, we're on Facebook. We're on TikTok, much to James's annoyance. Um, and also Twitch as well. Still need to try and do um, that. Uh, LMA 2001 uh, game, James. We need to stop. That. that will be done. That will be done on Twitter. Definitely, definitely want to get involved in that. So, yeah, look out for that. Uh, we'll be doing that, like I say, Friday, 27th of August, uh, around 9.30. Uh, me, James, and a special guest going through the weekend's fixtures and destruct, deconstructing any sort of kick clashes or anything like that. Looking forward to it. Uh want to say a massive thanks for Tom for coming on and uh, talking all things Spurs. Um, brilliant, brilliant debut, mate. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Smashed it. Brother, mate. You, you, hey, you're only as good as the team around you, aren't you? It's not like <laughs> I'm a uh, Lukaku at West Brom or anything like that. Don't worry. <laughs> so, some might say you are, mate. Some say you've raised the level. <laughs> I think, I think Sean's going to be quaking in his goalie gloves at the minute, I have to yeah. say. Um, Absolutely. but like I say, so it's not, it's not a guest appearance, you're a guest host, so we'll definitely be getting you on more, mate. Getting involved in the convo, uh, and all the features because you've uh, you smashed it, mate. Very happy you've come on. Thank you. Any, for anything, me. anything you want to plug? Your socials, anything? Tom, any gigs? As you are a musician. Not really now. Just uh... <laughs> we'll no, tag him in our socials anyway, guys. If you want to, if you want to um, uh, follow Tom for whatever reason. I mean, the Lukaku figures he he pulled out the bag, didn't he, for Belgium? So, uh, oh yeah, that's worth a follow. Yeah, get me on that. Yeah, it's worth a follow, isn't it? So there you go. <laughs> plug that. Just just show that over and over again. I'll. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll put his um, in the in the description. We'll put his uh, at and all that uh, in there for you. Um, so yeah, that's episode three all done. We will be back um, very very soon. Hopefully, Sean will be back as well. Um, but yeah, get involved in the show. Let us know. Like I say, email us at uh, no sorry talkingkits at gmail dot com. Uh, leave a like um, and subscribe to the channel. Also, leave a review if you're listening to the podcast. Help us grow because we're here. And we're just going to keep talking kit.